Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, call 567-0560, toll free for Dave and Broward, or pound 560 on your cell hey, phone. Hey, thank you, Rosa, for your Neil, His guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast Group. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560, QAM. It's Friday, you bastard. What was you Another drink, Georgie. Come on. 1002 at 560 WQAM. Here's a great website for you. For all you people that really are interested in finding out the real facts, or those who would just like to spread some more good, uh, true crap about George W. See, not spread lies, but true crap. www.realchange.org slash bushjr.htm. I get that a little bit too fast, probably. Are you having like a, uh, some kind of a spastic attack in there? <laughs> or did Joe Rose come in and beat the snot out of you? Look at that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's Joe Rose. He is a little pussy. You know, he's like a little girl. Joe Rose is a little girl. Just remember I told you that. Silly little girl. Like a little like a little pre uh junior high girl. But anyway, www.realchange.org slash bushjr.htm. All the stuff that you'd ever want to know, and it's uh see the thing with the DUI, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I do believe the thing the Laurie Flint story, I believe that. I don't think it'll come out because that broad, uh, evidently either somebody got to her and paid her off or else they couldn't pay her off. Yeah, she, somebody made her an offer she couldn't refuse, probably. They told her that Luca Brazzi would be coming if she spilled the beans, something like that. And then, of course, there's also the story circulating now about his arrest for cocaine in 1972, which you'll find on that website. And now they're trying to discredit the author. Very similar to the dang uh, quail store with a marijuana supplier in Texas that they threw into jail in the solitary and nobody ever, <laughs> nobody ever saw him again. I mean, it was only a little weed, and this guy, like, vanished into jail in Texas, no less. So that's going to be our poll question today. Somebody sends me the latest, uh, see, I'm confused now, because I went on the Internet here this morning and got the latest MSNBC Zogby uh, Reuters tracking poll, and now I get the, the guy who faxes me these every day sends me a new one. So I don't, the ones that I got on the Internet were from November 2, which is yesterday. So I don't know whether the ones he sent me here are the brand new ones or not. But anyway, Gore's ahead in Florida. Michigan by 10 now, if you believe this. Wisconsin by 5. Pennsylvania by 4. And Tennessee, Bush is only ahead by 2. And let's see, Gore is also slightly ahead in Washington and uh, 3 points ahead in Wisconsin. That goddamn Nader, which I got a great article about him, we'll get to. Nader is uh, getting some points. He's got 5 points in Wisconsin, 6 in Washington State, 7 here in Florida, 5 in New York, which isn't going to make a difference because Gore is 15 points ahead in New York in the latest poll. But this uh, latest chigger in the woodpile here yesterday, and then I have to laugh. I have to laugh. They're saying, oh, this is just like the Democrats to be doing stuff like this right at the last minute. Anybody remember Paula Jones uh -huh. and Jennifer Flowers uh -huh. and uh, Kathleen Willey uh -huh. and uh, Monica, uh -huh. yeah, and Whitewater and Blackwater and uh, uh -huh. Sweetwater? What are you talking about? Boy, payback sure is a bitch, isn't it? The dirty tricksters, they've been going at it since back when the dick was in the White House. Are you infirm? You didn't eat one of those little uh, burgers out there, did you? I'm fine. 
Oh, because you look like... not eat a burger. Oh, good, because you look like you'd be ill and like the after effect of eating a few of those. I took your work. No, don't do it. I mean, those are for uh, Graham. Anyway, no, I shouldn't say that. Peter Lund will get upset. But it's true, they're for Graham. He don't eat them. What was I just saying? Very important stuff. Oh, about the dirty tricksters. Oh, yeah, leave it to the Democrats to be doing stuff like this. I mean, a fact is a fact. This isn't something that somebody made up. And this this lame excuse about how he didn't come forward with this because he didn't want to tell his, his, his daughters to find out. He didn't want them doing it, drinking and driving. Now, Dick Cheney's got two uh, DUIs. Old Dick. And then here's uh, your young George W. He's got one here now that we know of. And then that cocaine thing. That, that thing may come out over the weekend. I think, I think that'll be the powder that, uh, that broke the camel's nose. Huh? That just could do it. How'd that poll come out yesterday before we get into today's big poll? Which applies to you? Went to another college, 482, 68.3%. Never went to college, 153, 21.7. Other, other meaning other than UM. And went to UM, 70, a measly beyond, point beyond. percent. Less than 10%. But everybody and their brother out there, if you listen to this station, oh, let's talk about that BSCS poll and about uh, we're getting screwed. We, 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 we. They get that wee-wee from that little girl on the morning show, that wee-wee stuff, you know? Yeah, that little pussy Joe Rose. Oh, gee, uh, nobody was supposed to know about my mooning gildy uh, yesterday in there. It's Joe Costello's fault. He's tattling. What was the word that he used? Submarine. Oh, he submarined it, yeah. I mean, if you don't want people talking about it, then don't be uh, flashing your ass like a little kid in the locker room. That would be probably the best idea, Joe. Well, that morning crew, they are really uh, they a shrink for that crew. Strange, bizarre. So here's our poll question for today. Will George W. Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome? Yes or no? I realize that's very difficult. Will G.W. Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome? Yes or no? Because inquiry minds want to no. know. That's right. I really don't know myself. But it, it is interesting, though. That, and, and then they had his spokeswoman on there with a the story first broke last night. And the media were in a feeding frenzy. They had his spokeslady on there, and she it was a little bit on the embarrassing side because they said, well, have there, were there any other um, substance abuse arrests or any other uh, substance abuse problems? And she said, uh, the, the governor's already uh, said that he's had uh, problems in the past. So they won't answer the question. They won't deny it. The cocaine stories, but that, so they just don't answer the question because if they deny it, then it turns out to be true. It makes it ten times worse. And this man is right, it's supposedly ahead in the polls because of the fact that he's going to bring morality and honor back to the White House. Uh -huh. Yeah. Scumbag. Low life scumbag. And, and this business about you for indiscretion, it sounds like Henry Hyde again. Remember that deal? He was only 40 when he lied to that woman and said he wasn't married and screwed up that poor guy's marriage, the guy up in Weston. He only broke up his family, destroyed the guy's life. He was only 40. He was just sowing his wild oats. Youthful indiscretion. I mean, G.W. was only 30, and of course he admits that the next 10 years after that, all he did was party and booze it up. But then he found the Lord. Hallelujah! That was the difference, see? All those Barbies and Goyim, they'll be impressed by that. Because now he found Jesus, so now, of course, uh, he's a good guy. Anybody believe it? No. Not if you have a brain. Maybe he found Jesus in a bottle somewhere, huh? Which would you rather find in a bottle, Genie or Jesus? That could be a good poll question for next week one day, I think. Nine minutes after ten. <laughs> and then, of course, our good friend... Uh, Ronnie Sustidas. Yeah, him. Then he brings on that little twerpy, big-eared asshole Ross Perot last night to endorse Bush. What did I tell you yesterday he was going to be sucking around Bush? There was no doubt about that. And what a performance that was. That, that was pathetic. What's that website again? www. Well, I don't know. Uh, realchange. org slash bush junior. dot htm. Got it? I know it's pretty long, but it's well worth it. A lot of good stuff on there. Some real heavy duty crap. Some of which maybe you'll believe, and some of which you won't. But you know something? The old saying: if there's enough crap out there, a lot of it's got to be true. Especially now that we find it. And then, of course, the the Republicans, the Bush people, found that retired cop up there in Maine real fast. And he says, oh, the man was, and I want to say this without being facetious, a picture of integrity. He gave no resistance. He was very cooperative, meaning Bush upon that arrest 24 years ago. He was going too slow, kind of weaving off the road a little bit. But that was before he found Jesus. 
10 after 10 at 560 WQAM. No portion of this program may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM Beasley Broadcast Group Incorporated. I know how to do a talk show. That was uh, pretty embarrassing last night. I mean, really, just uh, grotesque. And do you think it's going to change any votes? No. No. Not a one. Not one single one. 1016 at 560 WQM. Let's take a call or two, then i got some really great stuff here, including a fantastic column on the Ralph Nader by Jonathan Alter in this week's Newsweek magazine. Sensational column. Here's the mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. We'll see Tuesday, you fat faggot. Okay, great. There you go. See, this is this is South Florida for you. This is uh, doing talk radio in this town. We had a major story last night. Everybody in the world is talking about this now. They got Denny Hastert on there, the uh, Speaker of the House. But a beat, but a boop, but about doing his spin on it. And the first call we get, in fact, every single day of my life. You know, not that it makes any difference, but that that's the uh, you know the intellectual uh, capacity of this town. This is the end of the world here, man. If you have any doubts, listen to this show. That's what we're here to prove. And I think doing a good job. Here's Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Are the Republicans the most inept party at running a presidential com, uh, campaign you've ever seen in your what, life? What does that mean? Well, I mean, they look, How about the Democrats? They've got a booming economy. They've got record unemployment. They've got uh, eight years of prosperity. And uh, they're, they're losing right now? I mean, uh, how can yeah, you call the Republicans that's, inept? That's a good point. But, I mean, to roll this guy... George Bush out as your, you know, as your best candidate to me is just... Well, what about Al Gore? I, 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 I mean, this sounds like the pot calling the kettle black to me. Al Gore is the best the Democrats have got? Well... What? A man with a, with a personality like a wooden uh, totem pole? <laughs> And, and then Jew Lieberman, a guy who's running around talking about God like a crazy man uh, with his mezuzah under his armpit. I mean, what are you talking about? Well, at least they haven't been arrested, and they think as long as they don't tell anybody, yeah. you know, that it's going to remain a secret. Uh huh. I mean, this guy Bush, he is the arrogance he displays is. Well, well, first of all, who ever heard of the media, the press giving a guy a free pass and making up a thing about, I won't answer any questions about stuff that happened the, uh, more than 15 years ago? I mean, but based on what? It's unheard of. Well, that's like admitting that more than 15 years ago, and, well, I'll get to some of this stuff in this article here, but it's, uh, it's unbelievable. And, and the thing that... uh, How about if he would have murdered a couple of people like O.J. 16 years ago? Would that make it okay? Well, uh, according to him, I suppose so, as long as, you know, he was, he was young. Well, the media sure have done a really piss-poor job on this whole deal, I'll I, tell you that. I agree with you. No one, it's like no one's willing to uh, state the facts just, anymore. Just, just like his uh, disappearing, his parole last night, talking about Al Gore uh, getting a special privilege in Vietnam and having a personal bodyguard. In the meantime, here's a guy that disappeared, never, well, not only didn't go to Vietnam, but disappeared his last year in the National Guard. 
that got strings pulled to get him in the garden in the first place and then vanished when he was supposed sure. to be in Alabama while he was out boozing and partying it up, and nobody wants to talk about that, including Larry, who did a really great job. Uh -huh. Yeah, nice going, Larry. Got his, he's, he's just like Yeldy with Joe Rose. He's got his head so far up Ross Perot's ass that he can't see the fourth for uh, the hemorrhoids. Larry. God, how embarrassing. Here's the mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. You, you, do, you, you are right. You do have some characters calling in on, each, on this show. Characters uh, calling in. But, uh, you know, the, the real issue here we need to discuss when it comes to all the Bushites here is that it is an issue that George Bush brought up himself. It is the issue of credibility. Yeah. It is the issue of character that uh -huh. he has harped on right. for six damn months. That's all they've been and talking about. And now, when Neil, when, uh, and excuse me, when Al Gore, Neil he Gore. was released to smoking marijuana, and yeah. very least admits to it, George Bush won't discuss what happened 15 years ago, and then it comes out four days before the election. He was arrested regardless of who it was. He should have at least brought that out six months ago yeah. himself. I, b I believe the abortion story, that Larry Flint story, and I certainly believe the cocaine arrest. I mean, this this man has got a, a past. No, nobody comes out and says, I won't discuss anything that happened more than 15 years ago, unless there was some real crap in there. And I, th I think if the public is going to, I mean, he's not running for dog catcher. He's running to be the leader of the free world and the most powerful goddamn leader in the world, and the public's got a goddamn right to know. Now, don't confuse the bush lickers like, uh, you know, like some of the people around here with the facts. So the good news here in Joe Rose isn't going to vote on Tuesday. That was great news, because we know who he'd be voting for. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. In fact, maybe Robert Grieper. Maybe they'll go together, hand in hand. I wonder if Joe, if they, if they do get him to vote, you think he would moon Robert right there in the polling place? He probably would do that. That's why he's not going. He's a, he's a compulsive mooner. In fact, I was asking Defoe what Joe's religion was. He said he's a moony. Yeah, that's what he told me. Could be. Sure. Okay, here's our only other call, which is okay. Like I said, I got a lot of stuff here, and these people have nothing to say about any of this, which is which is just mind-boggling. Mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes. Mr. Neal, hey, how's it going? Okay. Hey, don't we want somebody like us in the in the White House? This is a perfect example of somebody who's like us, you know, getting arrested for drunk driving, right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, what was uh, drinking the eagle? Like smoking marijuana, eating the eagle. So are you just making guttural sounds now? Somebody like uh, pulling strings and making sounds come out of your purse or what? I don't know, man. There's something in my throat. Yeah, there is, obviously. What did he say? That, oh, there was something in this Coke? Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. And you wonder why we didn't have C-SPAN come down here? God, this, this this place is so embarrassing that I'm just... If it weren't for those big paychecks, I'd be humiliated to work here. You know, I really... I'd, I'd be embarrassed as I'll get out if it weren't for those big, fat, gigantic paychecks and those lengthy vacations. God. You can't complain about the intellect of this town because there isn't any. Wouldn't you have assumed? I mean, they were they were foaming at the mouth there last night. I mean, and the phones ringing off the hook, and the emails they're just they were going nuts. Every goddamn network you turned on. And I come here this morning. Hey, you fat faggot! Well, we already know that. That's not news. Tell me something we don't know. And of course, that's probably one of those bush lookers out there. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the response. That's the only way they can respond. How the hell can you defend the indefensible? What? Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, I mean, I think I just can't allow that your level of hypocrisy. Yeah. You're unbelievable. How can you just, I mean, just at least admit you're the biggest hypocrite that's ever been anywhere. Why is that? I mean, admit it. I mean, I don't got to tell you why. I mean, you know exactly why you're a hypocrite. Why is that? You don't need me to tell you. Oh, okay, You're, you're smarter than everybody else. I'm smarter than everybody. Okay, brilliant. Do we have any idea what he's talking about? No. No. I'm not running for president, okay, asshole? George W. Bush is running for president. How about you? Are you running for president? We're talking about a guy who's running for president. It's got nothing to do with hypocrite. It has to do with this guy can't handle the facts. He's embarrassed that he's got a scumbag here that he supports. And no matter what they came out with over the weekend and, and revealed, this guy still, oh, you can't say that because you're a hypocrite. Yeah. And by the way, did I ever get a DUI? No. No, not, that, not last time I checked. Not last time I checked. Don't have no DUIs, okay? Here's Hollywood. Hello. Ever do cocaine? No. No. Neil. Yes, sir. Happy belated birthday. Thanks. Been around since KAT. Birthday is Sunday, sir. Birthday is this Sunday. Chris Myers. And anyway. Yeah. Listen, um, this thing with uh, this Bush guy, he is probably the most arrogant little prick yeah. I've ever seen. 
he's like, whatever he does, is like, I could just imagine him being president. It would be, anything goes on, he can do whatever he wants, just, you know, don't tell, you know, he trusts the people, they're going to do the right thing, and all his billionaire buddies. It's, uh, Dick Cheney, you know, he's the head, he was the head of, right? Yeah. Dick Cheney was the head of Halliburton. Yeah. One of the we biggest oil yeah. service companies. So you can just imagine, you can just imagine, it's like the the fox watching the hen house. I mm-hmm. think that's pretty evident. I just can't imagine people look at him and saying, this guy has has the, the morals or the quality of a person you want in the, in the, in the White House. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, well, they, they only had three DUIs between the two of them, plus the fact Cheney had three heart attacks and uh, bypass surgery and is like, uh, you know, other than that, in real good shape. And, and don't talk about Cheney's uh, daughter. Oops, sorry. Don't talk about his bulldog daughter. That's bad. Don't talk about her. She hasn't been around, has she? No, she's back in the closet till after a Tuesday. Exactly. She's in the closet with the bottle waiting for... <laughs> <laughs> okay, waiting for... He says, call him when the party started. Yeah, like Mo Green in The Godfather. Call him when the party started. You know, what was the thing about... Let's see, he's had um, heart attack... No, three heart attacks, open heart, quadruple bypass surgery cancer, gout, and allergic reaction to a pomegranate that nearly killed him. Uh, all of those things for, yeah, for Dick Cheney and two DUIs. Oh, oh. There's a classy guy. And the other guy was saying the Republicans are inept. I think you got it backwards, sir. The Democrats are running against the deaf, dumb, and blind, and they still can't get a lead. That's the kind of candidates they're putting up there. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. I tell you, these people, it's just, it's astonishing to me how you can't penetrate. I mean, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Nothing's going to make any difference to them. We could have, we could come out over the weekend with a series of axe murders that uh, Bush or Cheney did or both. And, well, you know, you're just being a hypocrite now. You're just, uh, you know, dirty tricks. You're desperate. Dirty tricks. Here's a great fact. George W. Bush promises to bring dignity and character back into the Oval Office. Are they brand names of vodka, scotch, or gin? We'll be checking that out during the break. This is Buck 60 QAM. Dolphins football only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. He was his body. He Ten thirty one at five sixty WQM. How's that poll coming out so far? Will George W. Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome? Fifty eight votes already. Twenty eight say uh, let's know. Twenty eight say yes and thirty say no. It's almost even right down the middle. And you know what that means? That means it just might. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Neil, how are you today? I'm doing okay. All right. I just wanted to tell you a couple facts about this. Uh, I don't know if it came out. I heard it on the news uh, last night that uh, Dick Cheney, when he decided to run for vice president, also admitted that when he was in his 20s, he had two DUI arrests as well. <laughs> and go, I mean, Clinton, uh, excuse me, Bush, Bush. What about talked about how he was such a young man. He was 30 years old when right. he was arrested. Uh-huh. And I saw the uh, young lady, the reporter from Maine, that got the story. And while he says he was driving slowly when he got picked up, she had talked to the police person, and that person mentioned that he had just run into some bushes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then he was driving away, and that's when he was pulled over. I think that uh, the guy from Hardball said uh, things that, you know, he was in in court. And they were at for a, uh, a trial, and they asked him, have you ever been arrested? And at the time, he says, well, I've done some things I'm not proud of, and, you know, I, in my young days. But he never answered the question. And what they're saying now is that when they, uh, the, the guy from the hardball said, 
Not hardball. There's a, the guy that used to be a campaign advisor for Clinton, and he uh, he's on the talk shows now. He had some problems with women, etc. And he said that Dick what Moore. could what what could happen is that he'll show in in mortgage papers or legal documents where they typically ask you, "Have you ever been arrested?" Mm-hmm. If it turns out that he did not fill out those papers properly, that that would show uh, more line. Mm-hmm. Well, I know he was arrested in college for uh, stealing a wreath or something, some college prank. I mean, but, you know, uh, the question is how many arrests and how many other things, and are we really going to get to the meat of the matter, the abortion story and the cocaine and all the other stuff? Here? I mean, for somebody to expect you to vote for him for president and just say, well, uh, not anything that happened before I was 40, I'm not telling you. And that's not acceptable. Well, being in your youth, I mean, 30 is not the uh, mark of... Uh, no, and, 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 and 39 certainly isn't either. Now have a great day, sir. Thank you. George W. Bush Jr. is touted as the savior of the Republican Party by the national press because he pulls votes for minority voters and has his dad's name and fundraising connections to run on. But before we anoint him as the next president, let's look at what he's done with his life. In a nutshell, Jr., one, grew up as a very rich child of powerful parents, two, partied from high school until the time he was 40 years old, three, made millions off sweet insider business deals from political allies of his dad, who happened to be the president, and four, got elected governor of Texas mostly because of his name. And this goes on at great length, and believe you me, I'll be uh, very happy to read all of it. At least uh, what I've got here in print. What's that website again? www.realchange.org slash bushjr, Bush Jr., bushjr.htm. And it's now up on our, our website. And it's up on our website there if you uh, didn't get it down. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, I've got a couple of uh, other facts. There was another story that broke yesterday, which I think is uh, even more important. It turns out that you know the situation in the White House where thousands of emails have been disappeared, haven't been able to been found regarding Gore's uh, campaign fundraising yeah. in California, mm-hmm. that Buddhist thing, and some other some of the other scandals. Yeah. Well, the father of the internet apparently forgot that the that there are things such as backup tapes, and one of those tapes has been restored showing that Gore had knowledge of the fact that he was violating campaign finance rules on the fundraiser at the Buddhist monastery. Yeah. So what, how do you respond to that? What about it? Well, you know, you're talking about what's more well, relevant what, what to the election. Have, what do you mean, how do I respond? DUI 10 years no, no, ago. No, no, the DUI or is a DUI is only one. Well, let me, let me say it again. The the DUI, DUI, you don't want to listen. You don't want to have a conversation, do you? <laughs> That's my comment to you. The DUI is only the tip of the iceberg, a very small tip, like I was just saying, but you didn't hear it because you don't listen. You don't take a breath long enough to hear anything. When it comes to campaign fundraising, and Gore's already admitted that with the Buddhist temple stuff, they're all a bunch of thieves. But at least he's committed, and he's made such a such an ironclad commitment of it to changing that. McCain Feingold, which your buddy, your boy, is against. He's against it. He's not going to cut off his nose to spite his face. Cut off all his financing from his rich oil and pharmaceutical oil buddies and tobacco people. Don't confuse you with the facts. Nobody's sitting here saying that Gore is without many blemishes. He's a tarnished candidate at best. But that, just like little big ears were saying last night, we got two horses left in the race. We got a horse and a horse's ass. That's what you got left. And it's always the same deal. Let's try to obfuscate. Let's try to take the big flashlight and take the, uh, you know, shine it over there in the other direction. Well, let's try it. it's been shining in that direction for eight years now, with 60 and $70 million of taxpayer money spent on white, white, uh, white water and penis gate and travel gate and all this other crap, which didn't amount to a pee hole in the snow. And now here's a guy who's talking about bringing uh, morality back to the White House and this and that and all the other bull crap. I'd say we've only got three or four days left. How about, uh, you know, being able to stand three or four days of a uh, little spotlight in that direction? Instead of just giving this guy a free pass, which he's had his entire life. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, just like his daddy was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Yeah, he, Grandpa Bush, he gave Daddy, he gave Papa Bush $5 million to get him started. Back at a time when $5 million was like a, some serious money. Not to mention Martha Washington there and all the money that her family has. They're just rolling in dough. They're dipped in it. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Good morning. Long time listener. And you notice nobody talking about the package that was sent to the Google campaign to set them up? Yeah. How come nobody's well, talking about that's, it? That's because it's old news, because nobody cares about that anymore. Yeah, it's old news. Uh-huh. But, you know, I, 
I think the FBI is covering up for this guy now. The what? The FBI. The FBI what? It's covering up for them. Covering up for what? Because they're not bringing out the story. I mean, they, they knew who okay, sent sir, it. Well, when you want to speak English, call me back and we'll have a great discussion about it, okay, sir? Or just forget about it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. I should have just kept reading, you know. Well, what's the point? Taking these idiotic phone calls. What the hell did the Bozo want there? Dropping off some mail for George. Well, George ain't here. I just want to make him paranoid. It's just that. Uh, it's bad. You know why you look at it. Trust me. What is it? Some foot fetish thing. Oh God, that that George. I'm beginning to really get worried about him. You know, eating too much of that bad ass. 21 before 11 at 560 WQM. It's Friday, you bastard. What the hell was that? Oh, look at that. See, I had to do that input thing because this, well, it's the board. It's a piece of crap. That's all right. We'll get back to it. What are you looking at me like that? No, I was listening to the uh, something off the Internet earlier, and you have to do the thing with the buttons on here because it's a uh, Mickey Mouse board. That we bought at Kmart on sale, on discount. 17 before 11 at 560 WQAM. 106 votes already. Will George W's uh, DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome? 54 yes, 52 no. 106 votes already. And I'll say it again. If it was an isolated incident, if that's uh, the worst a guy ever did, big deal. Not a big deal. But uh, like, even like some of the top Republicans were saying last night, why not come out with it? See, unless this was part of an overall syndrome, and there's lots more there, why keep it in the closet and give the other side the opportunity to bring this, bring this? In fact, last night when he was making his so apologetic statement and giving all this lame excuse about not wanting his daughters to know about this, he must have said four times in his three-minute uh, little speech there, he must have said at least four times, well, I sure it's funny, uh, you know, this coming out at this time, and I have my ideas about, you know, where this comes from. See, that's not the issue. That's not it, what, what's important. The fact is that he did everything he could to keep this from the public. And what else is it that we don't know? Huh? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Georgie. Here's a, a payphone in Perrine. Hello. What's up, Neil? How you doing? Okay. I'm a swath in Perrine. I told Joe to tell you that. Okay. Listen. That's why we put you on right away. <laughs> I had two, two or three things to tell you about. We don't want you to be a standing target down there. You know how it is down there. No. Check it out. Listen. I watched Rivera Live last night. Yes, sir. And this Democratic guy asked a Republican congressman that was defending Bush a real interesting question. Uh -huh. He said, uh, when you run your election for a congressman or whatever seat you're running for, and this come up about your opponent four days before the election, would you, what would you do? And the guy couldn't say anything. He was dumbfounded. But mm -hmm. he didn't want to come up with this, it's okay that the, Repo you know, the Democrats come out with this sleazy tactic, but he still wouldn't answer the question. He said, what would you do if your opponent... Something like this happened to your opponent, somebody you running a neck and neck race against. What would you do? He still couldn't answer the question. Yeah. He went on without the show, through the show without answering the question. Second thing, Neil is a buzz in the black community like there never was before. A lot of blacks getting out and voting, but we really do this guy as a threat to us. Don't be surprised if the black if the black vote carry this guy, carry going through the election. Then. All right. I'm Great. Telling you, Neil, this morning it's about. A, uh, 3,000 people expected to rally downtown. They vote early and often. I'm telling you, man, the black vote won't carry this guy this year. Do it, Plus, I never heard a buzz like this before. All right. And one more thing. Yes, sir. I told my wife, too, that we'll be punching it in the ballot, too. Okay. All right. Sure. <laughs> huh, he hopes. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. Yeah, the starches are going to get out there in big, big numbers, baby. And of course, down here in Florida, the Jews are going to get out. They are going to get out in massive numbers. The old Jews, they're going to be on their walkers and their wheelchairs and their canes. They're going to be crooking and they're going to be schlepping. That's right. All the old Jews are going out there to vote for Jew Lieberman. You got it, baby. And Bill Nelson, Andy Lane Bloom, if they live over there, you'll see. You can just almost smell it. All this goody two shoes, holier than thou, you know, nonpartisan. We're getting people to work together, yada yada. All this other horse crap, all of these lies. We see Gore tells all kinds of exaggerations, but in Bush's case, he just tells flat out lies. That's the thing about the patients' rights bill. That was just an absolute lie, one of many. But don't confuse those people with the facts, because for some reason they're enamored. I, I, it could just be that tax cut they think they're going to be. They're already spending it. Even though most of them aren't going to get it, they're already spending it. Sounds just like 1980 all over again, doesn't it? 
Uh-huh. And won't it be great to have another Republican recession? Can't wait. See, in a way, that's really not a bad idea, because then the market goes in the crap house, and when you're making some very serious money, then you can buy everything like dirt cheap, like on sale. Yeah, even your booze you can buy uh, on sale. Here's Delray Beach. Hello. Delray. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Neil. I've been waiting a long time to speak with you. My wife and I are people in our mid-70s. Yes. We enjoy your program very much. Thank God. And uh, I'm very pleased that you're involved now in discussing this ridiculous race that's going on in this country. We have two candidates, both of which are worth nothing as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the point I wanted to make in view of what co- happened uh, last night here is a man who is insisting that people who are willing to wish to buy a, a gun get an overnight check and get the gun immediately. Mm-hmm. And he's complaining about something that happened 24 years ago. Uh, why, why was all this hidden? Why, why didn't this come forward when he was put forward as a candidate? Yeah, yeah I mean, I'll say it again. The idea that somebody who wants to run for president and says, well, you can ask me whatever you want, but not anything that happened more than, uh, you know, 20 years ago. Well, what, what kind of a comment is that? It's idiotic. Right. Uh, one more thing, which is the main reason I, I wanted to call you. Papa Bush, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly when, but during his presidency, who was a member of the National Rifle Association yeah. as a life member, mm-hmm. resigned to send be his objected back. to what LaPierre had to say. Right, he sent his card back. Yeah. In. I'm wondering whether that's still the case or whether he joined again. No, he's out. He is definitely out? Probably gave the card to Junior, you know. Well, uh, I'm just curious because... There is a man who says, read my lips. I wouldn't believe anything that comes out of his mouth. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Neil. See you on Tuesday. Vote early now. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, Bye-bye. For Christ's sake, she's only got one eye. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless Lane. Here's Delray Beach. Hello. Delray. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Yes, I am. Okay, uh, the first time caller, long time listener. And uh, to begin with, I am not a registered Democrat, but this year, going Democrat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, a uh, frickin' fact running on the Republican uh, Party, uh, that is uh, ridiculous. And another thing I, I wanted to get your input, or maybe some of your listeners, uh, my wife and I, we uh, went to... Or, uh, Catholic Church in Delray Beach on Military Trail last few weeks, and uh-huh. we and we hear the priest to get up and uh, guiding, uh, implicating, or uh, implying that the people there vote uh, Republican. So after the sermon, I uh, approached the priest and I told him, I said, you know, I come here to pray, and uh, I don't come here for political speeches. Right. And, uh, you know, they had the captive audience, and quite a few of the people resented their, uh, you know, remarks. And I, I just want the people to know out there that when you go, don't buy this stuff that they're preaching. Okay? Vote your heart, because the best uh, man out there is Gore. Which ain't saying much. Well... That's true, <laughs> but, uh, slick in fact, yeah. you can flush it, okay? Okay, okay. Have a good one. See ya. Look for the QAM van from 11 this morning to 1 this afternoon at Bill Seidel's in Davie on University between Sterling and Griffin to get your best in the LCD and cassette and, of course, those nifty keychains and T-shirts, too. Miguel will be there. Bill Seidel's from 11 to 1 uh, on Davie and University between... Uh, what is it? In Davie on University. Or is it on, in University on Davie? Between, I don't know where it is. Just relax. Yeah, you... What happened to you? You started blowing your nose there, and I think your brain got affected about the quarter to ten this morning. I think it was after Joe Rose started bitching you out. Five six seven oh five sixty. Well, not directly you notice. You notice he always does it to an intermediary. That really cracks me up. That's what a pussy he is. Always has to do it to an intermediary. They're like a bunch of little chillin' on that morning show. Little chillin'. That'll be the theme song. Billy J. Kramer and Little Children. Here's Miramar. Hello. Yes. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, nice talking to you, Neil. Uh-huh. Regarding that schmuck's DUI uh, driving uh, uh, in- incident, his mother the other night admitted that G.W. was a heavy drinker until the age 40. <laughs> 
Now, that's a hell of a lot of drinking from this arrest at 30 and prior to that, yeah. to the age of 40. Oh, yeah, well, the word, the word now is that he just uh, drank and partied and uh, screwed around until he was 40 years old, and then he got uh, down to business. Yeah. Okay, now that's a lot of unquestionably heavy drinking. Yeah, and what else? all those years of drinking that way yeah. plays havoc with one's brain. Maybe that's why he speaks that way. Exactly. His uh -huh. brain, his mind, and his body, it puts him in the category of an alcoholic. How'd you like to take a look at his liver? <laughs> yeah. Stop uh, yeah. thinking about that. The brain is enough, I tell you, that showed. And uh, this puts GW one drink away from returning to alcoholism. Uh -huh. And that's all we need in the White House. A substance abuser. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. That, that other stuff could come out in the next few days. I pray. I pray that it does. Mm -hmm. do you know what, yeah. Neil, do you know what Joe Lieberman, when he first heard about it, what he said? The one word he said? L'chaim. Yeah, he said... Boy. Yeah. L'chaim. Okay, Zagas went... <laughs> oh, God, I just had to wipe the spittle off the phone there. When he said, well, the way he said that, I had to wipe like, uh, oh, man, look at the color of that thing, too. What's that, a birthday card from whom? Who's that from? Somebody sucking around? I don't know uh, who it's from, but Peter Leonard just threw it in. No, I already got a birthday card from Peter Leonard. I don't want another one. It might not be from him. No, I'm sure it's not. And tell him to stay out of here. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless Line. Bush Jr. has done some good work as governor of Texas. He has crossed the partisan divide, reached out to minorities, and tackled at least one tough, thankless issue, school financing. His plan was voted down in the legislature. But four years, even four good ones, is a pretty short resume for the leader of the free world. No one doubts Bill Clinton's ability to handle punishment and come back for more, but Bush Jr.'s stamina and attention span are very real concerns. Furthermore, Bush's term as governor has also been markedly corrupt, although possibly in legal ways, what we mean is he's taken millions in campaign contributions from certain big businessmen, many of whom were on the inside, who were in on the insider business deals that made him rich. And those same businessmen have received billions in sweet deals from the Texas state government during Bush's term. Specifics, like Al Gore, uh, Bush Jr. attended Eastern elitist schools, in this case Andover Prep and Yale. According to a Newsweek profile, he went to Yale but seems to have majored in drinking at the Deke House. He joined the secretive Skull and Bones Club in 1968, as any good conspiracy buff can tell you. His business career was marked by mediocrity or failure, which nonetheless resulted in him getting lots of money from his father's political allies, and his political career has been handed to him on a platter by his famous name and by his dad's cronies. Bill Crystal, a conservative pundit and Dan Krell's former chief of staff, says, The Bush Network is the only genuine network in the Republican Party. It is the establishment. Junior and Jeb Bush, recently elected in Florida, are first brothers to be simultaneous governor since the Rockefellers. To give you an idea of how rarefied his upbringing was, George Jr. had an argument with his mom at one point about whether non-Christians could go to heaven. Barbara Bush felt they could. George W. didn't. To settle the dispute, they phoned up Billy Graham right on the spot. He sided with Junior but warned him not to play God. More recently, Bush's performance during the South Carolina primary shows that he received the worst trait common to the famous Bush family, a vicious competitiveness that shows no compunction about duty tricks, just, such as the phone calls by his surrogates calling McCain, of all people, the fag candidate, and utterly shameless flip-flops like Bush Sr.'s Read My Lips, No New Taxes, and Jr.'s very public refusal to meet with the gay law cabinet Republicans group until right before the California primary, which he claimed he was fine with all along. Not to mention him suddenly becoming a reformer after he got shellacked in the New Hampshire primary. And it goes on, and we will, at great length. But don't confuse these people with the facts. Here's the latest the CNN tracking poll today, Bush 47, Gore 43. On the ballot, in the one race that, that I am asking you to pay particular attention to. Okay, calm down. Sports Radio 560, WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, a Beasley Broadcast Group Station. Anybody have a heart or a liver? See, I'm not paying any attention because I'm reading my uh, birthday card from the sales department, so I'm still not going to play that yet. What? Well, there's a method in my madness. In fact, maybe I only have to play one more bit the whole show if I keep uh, screwing up like this. Hey, it's my birthday, Sonny. I'm entitled, ain't I? Uh -huh. You bet. Look at this birthday card, and here's a real ugly, uh, it's a fag card, you know. Here's the ideal man. And it's got, uh, it's, it's uh, ugly. Ooh. That's what happens when you have a straight sales department. Their taste is in their rectum tush. That's what Joe said, Joe Rose. High Boy and Peter Leonard, which I don't understand. Who's this? I love the people that just put initials down there, which I have no idea what the hell is. Troy. 
May you have a great uh, something. Todd Dreck, Adam. Adam says, I, I know you wish you were in Amsterdam. Yes, that's right, Adam. Adam's the only one who understands. He gets it. He probably pick out the card. Anyway, 5670560. I'm going to read this Ralph Nader thing in a few minutes by Jonathan Alder. I'm getting all this stuff out here today in between the calls, which are getting really geriatric. 160, you notice that? See, that's because the younger people, they don't care about any of this. They wish I was talking about uh, the hockey game or anything else. I don't care. I'm not, I, we've got only three shows left today, Monday, and then Tuesday on Election Day. Did we ever find out for sure if I'm going to be voting in the right place there? And is Victoria Park? Is that the name of it? I guess it doesn't make any difference. Well, but I mean, if I go there in the wrong place, I can go to the other job. I'm, I'm pretty sure that must be it. You're not voting in Victoria Park. I'm not? I live in Victoria Park. No, not Victoria Park. Park. It's called um, something like that. Victory Park. Victory Park. As in victory for... Oh! for yeah. On the corner of 118th and uh, Sunrise, I believe. See, and I don't understand. How are you supposed to know these things? What if you don't have your own radio show? And you go to the place where... No, you go to the place wherever it says on your voter registration card, they say, oh, yeah, you don't belong here. Go over there to that uh, joint, to that place. What kind of crap is that? Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm a Neil junkie. Uh-huh. First of all, I'd like to say that this is going to have an impact on the election. Uh, oh, my God, my left ear just opened up. Thank God. I think something exciting just happened. Anyway, go ahead. It has to have an uh, I mean, they've been pointing fingers. I mean, the Republican Party is a party of scandals. Yeah. But uh, as long as it's not pointed at them. Uh-huh. And, uh... Okay, you talk about the pot calling the kettle pink, the idea that they're saying this is so typical of uh, Democratic dirty tricks. I mean, they, they pull every dirty trick on Clinton uh, you, you could shake your uh, thing at, and he's still in there. That's right, and this How guy's still drinking firewater. And, and uh, I want to ask you a thing, a thing Neil. Uh, what about the uh, thing with the, uh, they had the uh, lady pregnant and pay for an abortion? Yeah. Uh, any news on that? No, you're not going to hear any more about that, I don't think. They got, uh, I think they got to her. Okay, well, I'm going to go a couple times for uh, go. Okay. All right. Good luck to you, Pat. Okay. Don't forget the nose nose. That's the, that's the slogan of the Bush campaign this year. They can smell it out. <laughs> nose nose. Yeah, which, which are we going to inspect first, his liver or his nasal passages? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Makes me want to play that bit again. Five six seven oh five sixty. Don't forget, Miguel is at the uh, QAM van there. He may be on the way, or he may be there, or whatever. At Bill Seidel's in Davie on University between Sterling and Griffin to get all your Neil Rogers propaganda for Planned Parenthood. What do we got? We got well over forty grand, I'm sure, for Planned Parenthood by now. Maybe one of these days we'll get another total, probably on Monday. We're on our way. Here's a lady in Margate. Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yes, ma'am. How's your cold today? It's uh, getting to the end. It's good. Happy birthday. Thanks. Uh, I just want to say that on MSNBC, this reporter, Wayne Slater, uh -huh. said that Bush is a liar because he was asked a while ago about uh, any arrest charges, and he said, no, I haven't been arrested. Really? After 1956. After 56? So, right, and this happened in 76. Right. Well, that, that leads you to wonder what happened in 56. <laughs> well, that, must have, that, must have been, no, that must have been the college deal where he uh, was arrested. Well, like you said, it's the tip of the iceberg, and um, we just have to keep listening, I guess. Okay. You're very informative. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. 5670560, pound 560, how's the poll coming, Neil? Glad you asked. 172 votes already. Will George W. Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome? L look at that. 172 votes. What's half of 172 real fast? 86? 86, yes. 86, no. KC, K, no. Miguel is there. Miguel is there. Bill Seidel's, and he's dying for you to come by. He wants you. He wants your money for Planned Parenthood. Where Ralph Went Wrong by Jonathan Alter in Newsweek magazine this week. It says, Nader is hurting not just Al Gore, but all the causes he has championed over the years. Jonathan Alter writes, When I was 10 years old growing up in Chicago, I heard the demonstrators in town for the 1968 Democratic Convention chanting, Down the, uh, uh, Dump the Hump. That fall, they and millions of other supporters of Eugene McCarthy believed there was no difference between Hubert Humphrey and Richard Nixon. They were deeply mistaken, as we learned the hard way. When I was 22 years old, I spent the summer of 1980 working for Ralph Nader. My job was to write part of a book about the campaign that year. I was responsible for chronicling third-party candidate John Anderson. For all of our lacerations of Jimmy Carter, we understood that a vote for Anderson was a vote for Ronald Reagan. Even then, I disagreed with Nader on several issues, starting with his unshakable faith in lawyers and regulators, but I developed a deep respect for his leadership of the consumer movement. 
Last year, when several lists were published of the most important Americans of the 20th century, Nader's name was rightfully included. Bill Clinton's was not. In recent years, Nader ambled the streets of Washington unrecognized. He wasn't quite a has-been. His group still do some important work, but he seemed to figure from the 1960s and 70s. Now he's cool again, mobbed by young supporters, and I don't think he doesn't, and don't think he doesn't love it. When I saw him recently, his beef was with the press, particularly the New York Times, for not giving him enough coverage. Fair enough, and he and Patrick Cannon should have been allowed into at least one of the debates. It was idiotic to Barnett even from the audience. But my beef with him was bigger. By refusing to admit that there are deep differences between Al Gore and George W. Bush, by clinging to this emotionally satisfying but factually inaccurate notion of a Dem Rep pub, uh, party, Nader is squandering his most precious asset, his intellectual honesty. Start with the environment, which the Green Party is supposed to be about. Beyond his support for gun control, why is Gore in such trouble in a state like West Virginia? Because he won't roll over for the coal and chemical industries that run the state. They know he's the most serious environmentalist ever to run for president. It's Gore who negotiated the Kyoto uh, Accords on global warming and got Clinton to set aside the most acres for conservation since Teddy Roosevelt. The Sierra Club and Friends of the Earth believe Clinton has fallen short on getting some things through, as would needless to say a President Nader, but these and other environmental groups have enthusiastically endorsed Gore over a GOP candidate who argued in Texas that compliance with clean air standards should be voluntary. Or take campaign finance reform, the signature issue of many NATOites. A recent poll showed that voters actually thought Bush would be better on that issue than Gore, though Bush opposes reform and Gore supports it. This cockeyed notion is a result of all the coverage of the Democrats' 1996 irregularities. Much of that coverage was justified, but in combination with the endless GOP slurs on Gore's honesty and integrity, it created the phony impression that Gore is A in somebody's pocket and B not for cleaning up the system. Nader has fed these canards. The fact is, President Bush would veto the mccain fine coal bill banning soft money, while President Gore would work with John McCain and quite likely get it passed. That won't solve the problem of money in politics forever, but why make the perfect the enemy of the good? Nader voters might consider what's being called the Ivan strategy after columnist Molly Ivans. She urges voting with your heart where you can and your head where you must. New York mayoral candidate Mark Green, who backs Gore despite having once been Nader's closest associate, last week privately urged his old boss to embrace that approach, which would mean campaigning in states like Texas and New York, where the outcome is preordained, but not in Oregon, Washington, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and other swing states where he could truly cut through the election. So far, Nader is not complying. He's looking past the campaign toward building a movement. But he's going about it in the wrong way. And a Senate Green Party, whose zany platform of abolishing the Senate and other left-wing idiocies has been renounced by Nader himself, would simply guarantee Republican presidents for the foreseeable future. Naderites should have persuaded their man to run in the Democratic primaries. He might well have won a few, scared Gore, and pushed the party to the left on trade. That's the way real change occurs in American politics, and it would have given Nader the genuine influence he craves. Instead, he risks being marginalized by angry fellow progressives and remembered by history as a spoiler. That would, over, that would overshadow all that he's accomplished. Nader voters are under the illusion that a Bush era is somehow harmless to them, a mere interlude to rally their cause. Many were in grade school when Reagan was president and forget the consequences for progressive causes. It would be one thing if Bush were brilliant but lazy, or thick but hardworking, but he is neither brilliant nor hardworking, which means that the presidency will be essentially subcontracted to exactly those corporate interests that Naderites believe are threatening our democracy. That reminds me of the logic of those who extended the Vietnam War courtesy of Nixon and his unwitting allies on the left. We had to destroy the village in order to save it. America's tried that, Ralph. It doesn't work. Oh! Nice article there by uh, John Alter, Jonathan Alter in the uh, Newsweek. What I'm talking about. Are we going to change anybody's mind? No. No. Not those NATO rights, baby. They're building it. Nine minutes after 11 at 560 WQM. that <laughs> To an orgy at the county jail, looking for a broken that I could nail. Everyone jumping and doing their thing. We're all begging and they said we do that thing. Well, that's f***. Everybody, that's f***. All right. Let your bodies all over the cell block. We're banging at the jailhouse. Officer 47 was banging in May 3. They were the cutest couple that I ever seen. This one in May was eyeing me with a twitch. She said, come over here so I can make you my bitch. So let's f***. Everybody, let's f***. Take your bodies in the cell block. We're banging at the jailhouse. 
This foreign officer was standing all alone. In the bulge in his pocket was hard as stone. The war said, buddy, what you doing over there? Bang yourself in it, make it quit whacking in that chair. Let's pop. Everybody, let's pop. Take your bodies in the cell box. We're banging at the jailhouse. Pop. Every 15 at 560 WQM. Don't forget, Miguel is over there at Bill Seidel's on Davian University between Sterling and Griffin Road. Got it? How come I can't say that right? Well, you know where the hell it is. 5670560. You are just in, are you in the bag today or what? You look like you had a really, uh. Not feeling well at all. Why? What's the I, problem? Bad have headache, have, sinuses, congestion. Must have inhaled the aroma in the hallway there. Could very well be that. That's stuff that Peter left on that I'm table. On the last leg. Really? Okay, Joe Costello, we're going to have uh, be saying Kaddish for Joe about 12.30. We're going to be putting him away. And also, I'll play that last bit with all the apologies to the late Steve Allen. Well, yeah, he wouldn't like that. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, happy birthday. Thank you. I love your show. Uh, just, uh, just want a quick question here. Uh, with all the uh, press that is asking about or... Uh, Yes. Talking about the uh, George Bush arrest for drunk driving. Uh, I don't recall this same type of uh, scrutiny after the Juanita Broderick TV show came out. Juanita Broderick? Right. Who the hell is that? The woman that was allegedly raped by Bill Clinton. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't you think that there should be some kind of... Uh, I mean, I know we're only four days away from the election. Let, let me tell you something. Bill Clinton had every part of his private party inspected from the inside, outside, upside down, from <laughs> Jennifer Flowers to Kathleen Willey to Monica Lewinsky to, uh, you name it, uh, uh, half a dozen others. How much more did they have to do to inspect Bill Clinton's personal life? Well, in addition to which, uh, I read plenty about that, and there was nothing to it. Anybody can come forward and make some kind of accusation. There was no, nothing to substantiate it. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. And then they find out that there were troopers in Arkansas who hated Clinton like poison who were taking money to spread this crap. But, I mean, you know, don't confuse anybody with the facts. Okay, well, just happy birthday. Okay, thanks. See, let's go back to Clinton. Let's deflect, 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 deflect. Well, Bush didn't show up his last year in the uh, in the uh, military, you know, National Guard. No, deflect, deflect. We're talking about him. You want to vote for him to be your next president. Let's stop talking about Bubba and this one and that one and everybody else. Let's take a look at him. It looks to me like we have another Teflon candidate, is what it looks like to me. Uh -huh. He can do no wrong. Unlike his father, who could do a wrong. He had that Chinese girlfriend, Papa Bush. He did a wrong. Maybe that's why he puked his guts. <laughs> In Japan. Maybe he ate too much Chinese. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Here's Deerfield. Hello. Um, yes. Yeah. Hello? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I'm the first time, I'm, this is my, I'm um, 20 years old, this is my first time watching election coverage. Uh-huh. And I'm just, like, thinking about it, like, this is really odd how, like, what, one year ago, they were condemning Clinton for all his transgressions, and now this guy with the DUI charge didn't uh -huh. admit it or anything, and they're like, oh, well, it was however long ago it was. Years ago, yeah. And, like, nobody else, he got a slap on the wrist with the DUI, which I don't know what the law was back then, but I know what it is now. Uh-huh. And he just got a slap on the wrist. Nobody's saying anything about that. Yeah. Also, and like, they're also not saying anything about the fact that it was part of a 20-year-long drinking problem that he had, which he claims he's overcome. But nevertheless, there also are allegations of other substance abuse problems like cocaine and who knows what else. And he won't answer any questions about that. Yeah. And like on MSNBC, I was watching this morning, the reporter who leaked the story. How I remember how you mentioned about how he kept saying five about the five times mentioned about who leaked the story. Yeah, and about the suspicious about timing. Yeah, and she like comes on. She's like, "Oh, the lawyer who gave me the um information, he voluntarily said he was a Democratic delegate, and she doesn't find that suspicious, and nobody else does either." Uh huh. And no one asks questions. These are questions that I would like to find out the answers to. You bet. But no one else is asking questions. That's all I had to say. Okay. Tonight. Thanks a lot. Yeah, the fact that he lied to his daughters and then makes this lame excuse about, well, he didn't want them to do it. He didn't want them to emulate him and start dr uh, drinking uh, while they drove. I mean, come on, that, that's as lame as it gets. And they just had that press spokeswoman on there again, and she was like uh, Schmidt in her pants, had a look of panic on her puss. Because they do have uh, a record of him being asked in 1990. They had the date, the time, the, the interview, 1996. 
whether he was ever arrested, and the comment again, or whether he was ever arrested for drinking. And his response was, uh, I, I don't have a perfect, re something like that. I don't have a perfect uh, track record, whatever, but not, but again, an evasion, not a direct answer. He won't answer those questions. Now, if that makes him a man of great integrity and a man of tremendous backbone and a man of great character, then, hey, go for it. Grab all the bush you can, baby. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to give you a different uh, light here. I, I am an independent, a true independent, not yeah. a Republican hiding as one. I voted for Clinton uh, twice. Yeah. And um, Gore just makes me sick to my stomach. I can't stand the guy. I, I can't say uh, a lot better for Bush, but I will be voting for Bush. Uh -huh. for we got, in, in spite of anything that he may have done, right? I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what my opinion is. I think I was against the witch hunt that they did against Clinton back in the day. Um, I, I, I do believe that there's no one in this world, if you really uh, put your uh, effort into it, that will come up clean if your uh, private life is... Yeah, but let me ask you this. Life. Do you draw a comparison between somebody who has uh, screwed around, uh, you know, sexually? Do you draw a comparison between that, which just about all our presidents have done, and somebody who has a substance abuse problem and lies about it and covers it up? Do you think that there's a connection? I don't think there's a connection uh, exactly to what the, the level of uh, importance of, of each issue, but I do... Well, I mean, a man that's going to be sitting in, in the White House and have his finger on the button and possibly it's an opportunity to blow up the entire world and be making crucial decisions... Uh, don't you think that that's got to be somebody that we can trust? It, it is, but I mean, uh, in politics... Which has nothing to do with his sex life, with his penis? And Neil, and Neil, in politics, I don't think there's anybody you can trust. Uh -huh. But, but you know, the fact is that uh, I am against all these witch hunts and people trying to find, you know, who's got the better character. I'm, I'm a man of issues. So, that, so then what are the issues that you like? What is it that you like about uh, Bush? What does he bring to the table? Well, I'm against big government. I don't want government intruding in yeah, my see, life. All you, all you, do, you don't want government intruding in your life. No, I don't. I see, and the Republican Party is the bedroom, uh, the bedroom party, the party that keeps looking in your bedroom. Texas is one of the few states left with one of those old sodomy laws that makes even married couples uh, criminals. Even unless it's face-to-face -face intercourse, every other sexual act in the state of Texas is illegal. Uh, you see, you're uh, buying into propaganda, sir. The Republican Party does that. This is just nonsense. Yeah, They're not the I, party I, of small I, government. They're the party of fascist government. They want to stick their nose into a woman's womb and tell her she has no right to have any destiny of her own body. You think that's small government? I know. Look, I, I don't want to debate the issues here. The only thing oh, okay. I want well, to you say. don't want to debate the issues? Of course you don't, because you don't have a leg to stand on. You're an idiot. I don't want to debate the issues. You can't debate the issues because you have no substance. Oh, I shouldn't have said substance. <laughs> shouldn't have said that. There's a good lesson for all your kids out there. When you get your own radio show, don't go snorting on the air when you have a bad cold. That sounds disgusting. You know. Ooh. Go straight to the DCS. It takes only two seconds. There you go. A nice clean one for you. Nice clean snort. See, I gave the guy a lot of time. I tried to have a discussion with him. I asked him what it was that he liked. I mean, you know, I'll talk to the Bush people, but the problem with most of them is they don't have anything rational. There's nothing rational. He's against all the witch hunts, and it's got nothing to do with character. It's the issues. And I asked him, oh, he's for small government. See, he's buying into that propaganda about, oh, Gore is going to expand government. We've got a smaller government now than we did eight years ago, and Gore was the one behind that, downsizing government. But don't confuse anybody with the facts. He doesn't like Gore, period, for whatever the reason. He don't like the way he looks. He doesn't want to take a shower with him. Whatever the deal is, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of his either. It gives me the creeps, to be honest with you. But he's the best we got. And he sure is heads and shoulders, literally and figuratively, above, uh, above this drunk from Texas. Here's a mobile in Boynton Beach. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. First of all, that guy that just called about smaller government. Yeah. And since uh, Governor Bush became governor in Texas, the Texas government has grown by 8%. That is correct. The government has gotten bigger. Right. And they talk about Gore's spending. Gore does want to spend more than Clinton, but it is a smaller then, percentage of the GDP. They don't right. understand that. Right. So these people are way off. Also, another lie you can add to George W. Bush's list is that he says he has not had a drink since 1986. There's a website. It's gwbush.com. You go there, and you can see a picture and even download a small segment of video of him drunk as a skunk drinking bourbon at a friend's wedding in 1992. All right. 
Look it up, gwbush.com. Now, 1992, that sounds like it's only eight years. Maybe my math is faulty because I have this head cold, but that sounds like it's only eight years ago. And right, he, exactly. He so that's he another one. Yeah. And also, if you go to this website, you click on multimedia, you can hear George Bush. He, he's attacked this website and tried to have it shut down. Yeah, oh, I've got when, that stuff here, too, when, yeah. When questioned about it, he said that there ought to be limits to freedom. This man is a garbage man, and we're aware of the site. He said that there ought to be limits to freedom, and you can see the quote and the source and even download an MP3 and hear him say it. So this guy is a liar, he is a scumbag, and it is all hell going to break loose if he's elected. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Yeah, I've got the, um, I got the thing about the websites that they've um, tried to shut down. In fact, many of them they have shut down. His campaign quietly and probably illegally bought up over 200 anti-Bush domain names, including BushSucks.com and BushBites.com and BushBlows.com over a year ago. Illegally because he had refused to register as a candidate as part of his effort to make it look like people were begging him to run, so spending money for his campaign was not allowed. If you type in any of those URLs, you end up at Bush's official website. His campaign refuses to say whether this means they admit that he bites, blows, and sucks. <laughs> it says maybe he used to be a White House intern. If you wanted to set up one of those sites, breathe easy because many good names are still available. The Bush camp somehow neglected the purchase bushesaprick.com, bushesweek.com, or bushstocksdonkeydicks.com. So $70 makes them yours. 26 minutes after 11 at 560 WQAM. Miguel is out there with Bill Seidel's with all our best of meal stuff. Don't forget about that. Well, let's have a drink. One, two, uh, three. I made it through college and average to see. I have a lot of money, but not much of a brain, like most of you voters who were just as lame. But I can say one thing that you can. My daddy is an ex-president, and I got money, power, and nothing to lose. I can do anything I choose. A little bit of cash is all I need to satisfy my ego and my greed. Manipulative marketing is all I use to garner votes for morons just like you. <laughs> that is cool and make fun of the laugh. <laughs> I don't think I laugh that bad. <laughs> Remember to vote. For George Bush, and those of you who don't, you can kiss my tush. You see, what matters to me about the presidency is that it makes a nice conversation piece. I'm the king of denial, too. I have no problem lying to you. So why is it so important for you to know whether or not I did blow a little bit of cocaine up my nose, a little bit of juice, a little blow. When I'm elected, I'll put it in the wall back. When I put up the concentration camps. <laughs> One to thirty-one at five sixty WQM. So Miguel is lonely over there at Bill Seidel's uh, on uh, in Davie on University between Sterling and Griffin. He's got a lot of best of deals stuff. Hundred bucks. It's not even worth his gas money to go there for hundred bucks. He'll be there till one o'clock. So let's get with it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless lines. Here's the lady mobile. You're kidding. Oh. I didn't know it. it just cut out. Hello? 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 Yes. Hi, Neil. Hi. I'm calling from Key Largo. That's what I said, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. It's okay. I thought maybe your conversation would be interesting. Then. Um, I was, kind of. You were um, in. So listen, I'm an independent. I will be voting for Ralph Nader. Uh-oh. Rick and Gore both make me sick to my oh, stomach. Sad. Well, what's the point? Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, you don't know? They both make me ill. Yeah. Well, listen, I had a scoop on uh, that, Bill McCollum. Yeah. I work in a restaurant, one of the nicer restaurants in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, no, he's a cheap tipper. We already know about that. He's cheap. Did you? Yeah. I didn't hear. He left like 10 bucks for a whole table, yeah. He did? How did you know? Somebody hey, already called? He faxed that to us uh, last week. Yeah, they said he's a cheap prick. Did they, did they fax a copy of the bill? I wanted to do that. No, but I'd love to see it. And you know what his first name is, by the way? No. Ira. Yeah. His name is Ira W. McCollum. Well, what does that mean? He sure ain't Jewish. Well, where does he get a name like Ira? Okay, fax that to me, sweetheart. Okay. Okay, right from your trunk. She gonna fax it to us? No. No, his name is Ira. Yeah, but Colin, that sounds like a like a real Jewish name, don't it? Oh God. Have another drink, sweetheart. Yeah, she's voting for Nader. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just don't like the other. Yeah, I mean, this is what you're dealing with. You know something? I I have felt this for years, and I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it's just like the thing with jury duty. It's the same thing. 
The idea, this business of a jury of your peers, the idea, you're dealing with such morons out there. If your life is on the line, just like the OJ trial, a bunch of morons there on that jury, a bunch of dodo birds and professional sparsers. And, and the same thing with elections. The American electorate, uh, the population here, you should have to pass some kind of a civics test before they let you vote. But that's, that's what should have to be done. You ask somebody, well, why, why are you voting for this? Oh, I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. And the McCollum's name is Ira. Yeah, so what is that in 40 cents? We'll buy you about a, a third of a cup of coffee, okay? You turn yeah, about a third. God. Every day, these people that you hear, these are the ones that are going to be out there on Tuesday voting. Make no mistake about it. And then these people that call in on the show, they're complaining about the people on those focus groups they see. That, that's you, folks. That's you. That's America. They're busy watching the Regis on there like they just discovered him. He's 150 years old. Now Regis is the hottest thing going. And a, a crucial where they ask, what color is an orange? Here's Carl Gables. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Um, just been noticing uh, the callers. Uh, they're, they're getting on Bush's past. But apparently they all love the Kennedys. And the Kennedys are a bunch of... So the leaders. Kennedys are running right now. George W. See, this deflection business doesn't work on this show. The Kennedys aren't running for anything. They're drunks, murderers, and rapists. Yeah, well, they're not running in Florida. Which Kennedy is running in Florida, sir? Yeah, but see, Which that's Kennedy okay with you. It's okay Which Kennedy, Kennedy is on the ballot, sir? Which one? No, but see, you're always talking about... Okay. Five, six, seven. And I never did say it's all right. I said there were a bunch of carousers. I said the old man was a crook, Joe Kennedy. And the, the kids were all a bunch of carousers. I do like Ted Kennedy. He's a great senator. But, yes, he is a, he is a drunk. But, you know, something we already know about that. And Mary Jo Kopechny, she's still dead. We, there, there's no secret in there that there are a bunch of uh, drunks. Everybody knows that. He's getting a divorce again here from his 85th wife, Ted. But it's no secret. And the electorate already knows that. And they still keep electing him over and over again. It's one thing to know it and say we don't care. It's another thing to lie about it and then say here's a man we're voting for because of his character and he's going to bring morality back to Washington. You don't want to hear that, do you, sir? You don't understand that. The Kennedys. Is there anybody named Kennedy running? Uh, down there? I think not even Sheldon Kennedy. He's running. Here's Weston. Hello. Oh, good morning. He's running from Graham James as fast as he can. Yes, sir. The, uh, a little late now, Shelley. The spokeswoman for, for Bush, was that B. Arthur? B. Arthur, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. You know what? Uh, you know, how, how, how old is, is Bush right in now? Fact, it looked like she was getting mauled by that. Uh, how old is Bush? Old enough to know better. I don't know, 54, something like that? Okay, well, what they keep, her, her answer to every single question was it was an indiscretion when he, when he was a youth. Now. When he was 30. Yeah, he was youthful 30 years old. This guy did not hold a job when he was 40 years old. He, right. He was unemployed. Well, let me, let me say it again. The, there's one line in this stuff that I was reading before that sums it all up perfect, if I can find the damn thing, and that is for uh, he partied from high school until the time he was 40. He was given everything he had, and uh, he, so let me say it again. From the time he was in high school to the time he was 40, he drank, caroused, and screwed around. That was his life. And also disappeared for that last year of his uh, military duty in the National Guard in Alabama, never showed up, which nobody wants to talk about that either. And every time they mention that on one of these shows, they gloss it over like it doesn't count. What these apologists fail to understand, especially the ones with the distinctive accent down in Miami, uh -huh. is... Well, how many... Uh, what, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, how, what does that mean, the, the, distinctive accent? We haven't had any Cuban people calling in here today for Bush. What, the, your last few apologists that were just on? No. Well, the, Absolutely not. The the uh, you think that the Cubans are the only ones voting for Bush? No, they're the just case, then we don't have to even bother voting. It's the auction's over then. The the, the problem is the hypocrisy that that the, the GOP has. They're the ones that have been preaching morality. It wasn't been hasn't been the Democrats that were preaching morality. Of course, uh, you know Clinton has been a problem and his actions were problems. But they never went around saying, no, no, my no, life. no, no, sir. Clinton hasn't been a problem because Clinton was screwing around in the White House. That's what he was doing, just like almost every one of his predecessors. And the gotcha Republican right wing lunatics, this is their tactic. Don't you understand? This is always how they're going to nail you. We caught you, gotcha, gotcha. And the only problem being that it blew up in their face because then along came Larry Flint and we had the Bob Livingston scandal and the Henry Hyde scandal and the Dan Burton and his illegitimate kid scandal. And we found out that they're all a bunch of uh, scumbags, too. There hasn't been any Clinton problem. Clinton's not a drunk. Clinton isn't a cocaine, uh, sorting cocaine. 
He, he smoked a little dope when he was in the college, whatever. George W. Bush, he couldn't lick Clinton's ass. I'll tell you that right now. He's not in the same category as a human being with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton's got more brains than his little finger. Bill Clinton spent the last eight years negotiating world peace agreements with the leaders that George W. Bush doesn't even know what their name is, and even if he did, he couldn't pronounce them. So please don't insult Bubba by uh, putting him in the same category with his lunkhead, with his lightweight, who, who's on the verge of just being handed the presidency because his name is Bush and because a bunch of rich assholes have decided he should be their, their uh, mouthpiece. He's the spokesman. Well, speaking of the spokesman, 22 till noon at 560 QAM. This is 560 QAM. It's a lie. I am not a Nazi. I saw Paula Jones in penthouse today. Like a car crash, I couldn't look away. It burned my eyes. What can I say? If there's one thing worse than her face, it's a lace wide open. It's such a bad sight to see Clinton's favorite place. She showed us everything with lace wide open. With her lace wide open. 15 till noon at 560 WGM, so we find out that there is an Ed Kennedy running. He's on the ballot. Is that Data Broward, or did they say? I guess they didn't say. Running for something, clerk of court in Data Broward. So I take that back. There is a Kennedy running. He's not Jewish, and he's not a drunk that we know of. So sorry, Ed. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Will George W. Bush's DUI arrest make a difference in Tuesday's election? That's our poll question today on neilrogers.com. 119 say no, but 117 say yes! Yeah! Out of 236 votes. Here's Georgie right now, as a matter of fact. Georgie Porgy. What do you got to say about it, George? If I become the president, we will waste no more time preparing to defend the American people. Thirdly, as president, I will seize this moment of opportunity to build the military of the future. Our military is strong, but we cannot rest. The world moves forward in technology, and we must move even faster. We will, invest in we will invest in military technology that takes us years ahead of any challenge. Our heavy forces will be lighter. Our light forces will be more powerful. And, and all will be easier to move across the globe. This will require spending more and spending more wisely. I will commit an additional $20 billion a year for uh, $20 billion to defense research and development. What is it? The best way to keep the peace. Uh, wait a minute, what was that? To redefine war. <laughs> oh. See, he memorizes fairly well, you know, all this stuff that they program in him, but once he uh, gets a little bit off the track, it's like, uh, now what is this? What is this supposed to be here? He hasn't got a freaking clue. And isn't he allocating less money to defense than Al Gore? Yes, his, defense, uh, his proposed defense budget is less than Al Gore. That is correct. Just like it is a program for education, considerably less, much less than Al Gore, including no no help for uh, for middle class people with their uh, college tuition for their kids. Oh, you should have heard Ross Piro last night. This was incredible about the great program his uh, corporation in Texas had about how they help out the parents. You got to go out there and do 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 and work. You got to work your way through. And uh, they they do this, they do that, and they let they let them have off uh, whatever shift they want so that they can uh, get a job the rest of the day. It's not a government thing. Government can't do that. Government can't help. Uh, you know, you got to do it yourself. you got to work your way through there. Roll up your sleeves and do-do all over the place. And the best part of it is you know that there isn't, other than Larry, who just sits there mesmerized, there isn't one person in America who's paying any attention to this pool for the big ears. Not one. Here's Deerfield. Hello. Yeah, Neil, I, I just can't believe this guy was 40 years old before he decided to... And look, before he decided to become like, you know, a normal person, he was drinking. I mean, who needs this as my president? Yeah. I don't want him running my life. Mm -hmm. You know, most people at 40 years old have a, you know, either a family or uh, whatever. He was selling his wild oats. See, the Republican Party considers you to be a young whippersnapper when you're like 35 yeah. or 39, I guess. You know, my other like point. Henry Hyde. Yeah, you know, my other point is, you know, we have a chance here with, uh, you know, I don't want to see Joel leave him in his little yiddle on TV right now. Not a good idea. No. Well, is, he, is he on there? 
for his little mother and his wife. I don't know. Oh, right hey. Well, thank God I'm not watching. I'm, I'm watching Bush, and I'm happier to see him than Drew Lieberman. It's amazing if this Bush wins. I tell you, it's a sad, sad thing. Yeah, well... No, don't overestimate, overestimate the people, American economy. You know, people are real morons. They, they are. vote for this guy. I'm okay, serious. pal. Vote three or four times just to make sure. I hope it will. Looking good in Florida. Okay, I'm praying. I'm praying. Baruch Hatar or Nai, no more Bush. Yeah, that's what we say. Are they going to bring the food here? We're holishing here, by the way. I'm, I'm getting really exasperated here speaking of Jewish people. That's Scott and Ira. Anything you need. Any, what, you called them like hours ago, didn't you? Seemed like an eternity ago. And uh, we're on our last legs here now, just barely, barely hanging on. Feet are cold, baby. Feet are cold. Start of a fever. I got no fever. I'm as cool as a cucumber, but this freaking cold. Oh, man. Ears are plugged up as tight as a snare drum. My skin is as dry. And I don't think it's a cold. I, I think it's allergies. Joe's got the sinus thing. It's these freaking Florida allergies. Every time I go away anywhere else, my skin clears up. I don't have all the dry, cakey, flaking skin. And, like, uh, you know, and I can breathe and my sinuses open up. And I come back here and it's like, like that. Just like that. And a little like that, too. Out of town line is open. You better call while we're still on the air over there, okay? Because you never know what they're, how they're going to dick us around in Fort Myers. 877-785-6345. That's our toll-free worldwide number. 877-785-6345. 6345. Here's Kendall. Hello. Happy birthday, Neil. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering when are you going to send the van down towards either Kendall or US 1 in somewhere south of Miami? Probably as soon as uh, one of our salespeople finds a sponsor down there that he can uh, siphon off our campaign on. That, that's the way it works, it looks like to me. I don't think they're selling the keychains at uh, Specs, have they? No, no, they're not. So what a bummer. Um, well, we'll get him down there. They'd land right. somewhere. I'll, I'll be sure and tell Miguel. He speaks their language. Thank you, Neil. Okay. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Yeah, let's get with it, okay? Let's stop letting Brian and those people in our sales department manipulate Miguel. If anybody's going to manipulate Miguel, I'll be the one to do it. Now that my hands healed up. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Same thing every year. We try to raise money for charity and leave it to our sales department. Boy, to stick their nose in there and you know try to use this as a, they they make me ill, make me really sick. I noticed Brian didn't sign my card too. That's good. I don't want to have my birthday card polluted. Here's a mobile in West Palm. Hello. Hey, hey. Yes, sir. You're an idiot. Okay, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Go Lake Bush, pal. Go Lake Bush. I'm an idiot. That, see, that's, this is the response. Very good. He waited for like 25, 30 minutes for that. I hope it made you feel good. I hope you're squeezing it real hard now, pal. I hope that all the pus comes out. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Here's a mobile in Kendall. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, that guy called a few minutes ago, and you said that if you want to debate with him, well, I want to debate with you about bigger government. Yeah. Gore has three times the plan of... Uh, wrong. Absolutely wrong. <laughs> I don't debate people that just read me the propaganda that you've got written down, the stuff that Bush has been saying in the debates. I mean, even a child out there is laughing at you, sir, just for repeating the same mindless crap. Wrong. Absolutely, positively Wrong. If you, if you take the time to sit and watch MSNBC or CNN or even goddamn right-wing Fox News and see them, you know, break these things down and show you the facts and figures or maybe read a news magazine like Newsweek or Time or somebody that's like in the middle of the road, maybe you'll find out that you're full of crap. I'm not, I'm not interested in debating anybody. I'm not going to debate. you already made up your mind and uh, good luck to you, okay? Good luck to us because you've already made up your mind. Smaller government. That's the Republican Party of the 80s and 90s and now the new, uh, the new millennium. Smaller government, right, which means basically we're not going to help anybody who needs government to help them. What we're going to do is stick our nose in our bedroom and in your room and up your ass. You're not fooling anybody, sir. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, yes, sir. You should have played um, Bush as he was saying, I'm going to restore honor and dignity to the White House. Yeah. As he's leaving the podium in Michigan. <laughs> Oh, did he say that? Yeah, just now. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, he said, he oh, said, and he said the last round's on me. Uh, Mr. Mr. Character here. In an old new republic, yes. on the profile of Karen Hughes, that was his spokesman from last night. Right. Okay. Oh, you should have seen her. Did you see her this morning? She's, I tell you, she's probably wearing the pens now, but she's getting real antsy. Cause well, they, they are panicked. Fox News um, and FoxNews.com, they're now um, describing it as an 11th hour hit. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> okay, they're, they're, you know, they're switching, and, you know. I think they let, left a letter off of that. Uh, but anyway, in, in an old New Republic profile of her, she said, this is about her, just after the governor's re-election in 1998, yeah. Dallas Morning News' Wayne Slater press Bush about whether he had ever been arrested. He said, after 1968, no. I said, what about... <laughs> I said, what about before 1968? He said, well... And at that moment, Karen <laughs> stepped in and said, wait a minute, I've not heard this. She clearly wasn't prepared for what it was about, for what he was about to say, and he shut up. How do you like that? So he said no after 1968, and which this is was, a complete lie. 1976, which is, uh, sounds like eight years after 68. Yeah, he's all over the place on these arrests and his uh, substance abuse This problems. guy is, a, you're absolutely right, he's a lightweight, okay? He yeah. got into Yale not based on merit, but based on affirmative action for legacies. Because his daddy was prominent, that's how he got into Yale. Of course. He, and he good enough for the Kennedys, it's good enough for the Bushes. He avoided military service That's in Vietnam, built that waiting list of thousands of names, yeah. got into the Texas National Guard, right. was AWOL for a year, right. um, got set up in business by Daddy and Daddy's Connection, yeah. um, was a business failure, was drinking until age 40, until he found Jesus, right. and then traded off of Daddy's name and pulled the Louis Chaffel, Billy Cunningham, and with just $600,000, became the managing partner of the Texas Rangers. And now, how the hell did that happen? Texas stockholders liked him so much and thanked him for trading away Sammy Sosa. They made his uh, investment worth $14.9 million. Exactly. And because his last name was Bush, that's how he got elected governor of Texas. If his last name was Joseph, there's no way in hell he would have gotten if elected. his last name was what, Curtis Joseph? Such a thin resume, <laughs> one-term governor, where he's... Uh, destroyed the environment. It's, Houston has the worst air pollution. Yeah. Small okay, keep the going, country. pal. Keep going. I got to go, but keep going. Just keep talking. You're right on it. Well, he's right on it. But I said Curtis Joseph. Well, Alex, he tries to keep it in. Has to go high in the air. Thomas, given the gold, has he got it straight up for you, Stephen? You escaped the ball. The, uh, the mini disc there. I think I just went and down, blew it out there with Joe Bowen. See, when you're not playing that well in Lou Sarge, you still have to be. You have to play through it. You have to play through the flu. You have to play through your problems, and you have to win some big games like they did last night coming from down 3 1. Nice going, Maple Leafs, baby. Hey! Not these excuses like we're getting here from BM and TM. We won't see them too long. Wouldn't it be ironic? You know, that's the Caps tomorrow. That's their old team, both BM and TM. Wouldn't it be ironic if that's the straw that broke their back, sends them on their way? That would really be something, huh? Here's a lady mobile in the Hope Sound. Hello. Hello. Hi, Neil. How are you? Great. I was just calling because when I heard that lady from the Keys that said she was going to vote for Ralph Nader. And she couldn't tell me why. Uh, obviously. Um, but there is something going on as far as the Nader camp and the Gore camp that they're doing vote swapping. Yeah, it's, that's a bunch. Of, it's not, it's not going to work and it's uh, ridiculous. It's not, it's not going to happen. Well, a few people vote for Gore um, that were otherwise going to vote for, for Nader. Because all, all they want is the money for the next all, election. First of all, Nader isn't getting 5%. He hasn't got any chance. The latest poll nationwide he's got from, depending on which poll you look at, 2 to 3%. He's not going to get 5%. It's not going to happen. He's not going to get the $12 million. He's not going to pass go, and he's not going to get the 5%. I just don't want any votes being taken away from Gore to go to Nader. Right. Exactly. So that's all I wanted to call about. That's why I read that uh, article, Jonathan Alter's article about uh, Nader. Anybody that really has an open mind ought to read that. Have a great day, sweetheart. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Or John McLaughlin would say, bye-bye. Still haven't seen that show, huh? Is that tonight? I think that's tonight at 9 o'clock. Tape it. Uh, no, I'll be home. Oh, right. you will be home there is it's on PBS, I, I believe. I see it on the weekend. I don't know, maybe on that public access channel. It's all over the place. Bye-bye. 
757. At least, you know, there's a Nazi with a sense of humor there, John McLaughlin. This is 560 QAM. Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami, Fort Lauderdale. A Beasley Broadcast Group Station. And WQAM.com for the world. Amy, won't you do this for me? Please, Amy. I'm afraid. When it comes to the magic of musical storytelling, nobody does it better than the legendary Riff Raffi. And now you can get all his best on one album, Riff Raffi Orama. Jimmy's got a little bit of gas. A little party really needs a fuss. Remember every day to be sure and turn the waist so you do not kill your teacher or your class. Oh, no. Of all the tune filled tail spinners, none cut to the bone like Riff Raffi. And you'll get all his best in one album from Booger to the Tale of the Little Fire. Sometimes when you are whizzing, well, you play a little game. You fall because the fireman who got a pit for aim. Rip Rappy can shed bright light on even the darkest of subjects. Bouncy, bouncy bed, oh, bouncy, bouncy bed. What's Bobby doing to dad? Bobby, Bobby head, oh, Bobby, Bobby head. Why she yelling if she's not mad? Get out your checkbook now and order Rip Rappy over. Rama today. Give your children the gift that you'll be paying for a lifetime. The music of magic of Riff Rappi. Oh, get the piece of number. Oh, get the piece of number. Oh, get the piece of number. I ain't called Riffy Rappi now. And again, I didn't know what the arrest was about. I didn't know the details. Nobody did except... This is MSNBC. Wayne Slater of the Dallas Morning News. recollection, when asked that question, he stated no. Oh, he said no. He said the word no. I asked him... Um, were you ever arrested after 1968? He said, no. I said, what about before 1968? At that point, he said, well, wait a minute. Let's go talk about this. At that point, that's when Karen News came in. He said the word no. Uh, that's a fact. I remember it very well. But I also remember that the impression I had right after that was that he wanted to talk about something. We now know it was about this arrest. You hear now that Karen is saying the governor was too scared. The governor says... He did not, in fact, say no. Well, uh, I remember exactly what happened, and he did say the word no. Uh, what Karen also says is the governor and she are left with the impression that I felt that something had happened. And it's right. They're right about that, too. I was there. That's what he said. Da, 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 da. How do you like that, huh? Thanks, Ira. And Scott at Atlantic City, something Hollywood. Better late than ever. Liar, liar, hands on fire. You're not the kind of bitch that I would desire. How do you like that? Here we got this guy from the Dallas Morning News, Wayne Slater, the reporter. <laughs> yeah. Had the interview with W, and he said, I asked him specifically if he was ever arrested after 1968, and he said, No. No. And then he asked him about before 68, and then that's when Kieran Hughes, that bitch, the press uh, broad, the secretary, stepped in. Uh, what's this all about? What's going on here? Leave uh, W alone, okay? He's off his feed today. Give him a quick drink and get him out of here. How do you like that, huh? Where there's smoke, there's fire. Rhymes with... <laughs> exactly. Couldn't say it better myself. So what do we got over there? Are you going to eat it all? Or... <laughs> oh, great. Great. Sandwiches in here. I figured maybe Hank's guys might want uh, something. Yeah. But what about the big... Uh... Oh, it's right there. Well, when did, when did you come in here? I'm quick, man. You got to... Boy, that was one of the quickest ins and outs. Even Jeff Cohen couldn't match that. Do you have a fork in there? Take I have a fork, and I'm all set. I would fix me up good. Nice going, Ira. Don't take so long next time. I'll rip your ass again. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Neil? Yes, sir. How you doing, Neil? Great. Now that lunch is here, we're doing good. I'm going to vote for Nader, and I can explain why. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Arab. I want to vote for Gore and Bush are the same things now. Uh-huh. Nader will have a chance. Next election, we'll have a real election. Yeah. Three people fighting for it, and we'll get real results. And then what? And what's he going to do? He'll bring up the issues of the police state. Uh-huh. All kinds of issues. Uh-huh. I mean... Bush is a disaster. Yeah. But uh, we'll suffer for four years, and then we'll get a real election. Oh, okay. So now That's would, all I got. So now would you admit you're going to help Bush by voting for Nader? You admit that? Well, uh, for the greater good, when we will have Nader in, uh -huh. I will have, uh, we'll fix the country better. Yeah, okay. Thanks for your brilliant logic. 
see, well, that's two NATO people we've had today. They both, between the two of them, couldn't get arrested in a panty raid or even with a DUI. Hey, uh, he did not answer the question, yes or no, but replied, I do not have a perfect record as a youth. So the suggestion by Karen Hughes is that he'd already answered that question sort of in the affirmative, in her opinion. I, 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 it's vague. It's obviously... <laughs> it's vague. <laughs> it's a tough question. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. It's getting real smarmy now, huh? And this story about not wanting to embarrass his daughters or give them be a bad role model. Is anybody with a brain buying that? No. No. It's a cover-up, a part of a pattern of reckless, grotesque behavior until the age of 40, which, uh, you know, whether you, whether you condemn it or not or whether you say it's ancient history, that should be up to the American public to decide with the facts. Not have somebody come out and say, well, I'll tell you what I want to tell you, and other than that, piss off. Which is basically what he's been saying all along, and now we're beginning to understand why. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, how you doing? All right. You know, you're already talking about how bad both candidates are. Yes, they are. What's going to happen if we keep going like this? Who are we going to get to run? Elmer Fudd? Uh-huh. Well, it might be. I mean, this, this is... I, the... I got news for you. Elmer Fudd speaks about as good as Bush. Well, you know, I can understand the partisanship, and I can go both ways on it, but um, it's, it's kind of disgusting. I mean, where are we going as a country? Who's going to be able to run, you know? Who's going to be? Who's going to be next? Well, unless we have campaign, Mr. Rogers, unless we have campaign finance reform, nobody's going to be able to run except all these rich, just for brats like George W. Right. And Gore. And well, that's why we're in the dilemma we are right now with Gore and Bush. Uh, at least you're not happy with either one of them. Gore, at least Gore is dedicated to passing the campaign. Okay. Are you well, there, sir? Yes, I'm here. The phone just quit. Campaign finance reform, which Bush is against. Okay, but you know something. I mean, I could sit here and say they had it for eight years and had a chance to bring it forward, and they have. And they, and they, and they have. That. They have. And the Republicans have killed it every chance they've gotten. They have had uh, eight years, and they can't do it against the Republican Congress. Well, you know, it's just, I don't know if, you know, I don't know if there'll be a backlash, but I tell you what, when this news came out last night, I was disgusted. I'm like, where are we going? You know, what are we doing right now? We're going to yeah. destroy people's life from 25 years ago, and it doesn't matter who it was. It was Al Gore. It's the same thing. I don't want to hear about stuff from 25 years ago. I know you think it's important if they didn't tell the truth, and I can understand that a little bit. Sir, when a person is running based on morality and character, it is important. I don't, I don't know if I've only heard that, Neil. I've heard about Social Security issues. No, no, I've heard no, about taxes. I've this, heard of other things, This is the centerpiece. He talks about it in every speech he makes. He just got through saying it in Michigan again about restoring morality back to America again. Okay. So, yeah. okay but we're talking about morality 25 years ago. Morality, morality, what he morality did 25 years ago. We're talking about what he's been doing in interviews up until last night consistently all along. And he's lying and covering up, and we don't know how much else there is. Okay. Well, you know, something that can go both ways. I'm just disgusted. You know, as a person and just sir, a voter, sir, it's just, disgusting. Just saying it can go both ways. Yes, it can go both ways. I mean, you know, anybody, you can talk about what Al Gore did. He admitted he was smoking pot back in Tennessee yeah. with all the boys. But he did it over there, too. He did, and nobody cares about that. Don't you see the difference? Uh, sir, I'm not going to have a stroke here trying to convince you because you're apoplectic and you're making it a lot harder than it is because you, well, you're one of those people. Don't confuse me with the facts. And you lay the facts out there. Al Gore has already admitted to that. Nobody cares. We finally grew up to that point. We're not going to make a big deal. Did he inhale? Did he... Nobody cares about that. Bush, on the other hand, who pretends to be Mr. Moral, and, and, and by saying all of this, of course, is condemning all of the hanky-panky and the penis gate with Monica Lewinsky, all that stuff with Clinton. And now comes to find out he's a freaking liar, too. And like I said, if there was a lot more to it than uh, just this, and if there was cocaine, and if there is any truth to that story about the abortion, which was illegal in 1970, it was a felony. If there's truth to that, then we have a right to know that, too. And just whining about it and about how bad the choices are, this is what's coming on Tuesday, sir. This is what you got. I don't like it any more than you do, but this is what you got. Take it or leave it. Ten past noon at your friendly station, WQAM. <laughs> This is 560 QAM. It's Friday, you bastard. Hey, kids, don't know all the answers? Don't worry. Now there's the Robert De Niro Magic 8 Ball. Just ask a question, take it, shake it, and listen. You talking to me? Does Tommy Chuck like me? Ah, what are you worried about a snot-nosed punk like that for? What are you, eight years old? Get out of here. <laughs> Welcome to the future. Am I going to get a puppy for Christmas? Well, answer me this. Are you going to take the dog for a walk every day? Feed it? Give it a bath? Clean up after him when he takes a dump on a carpet? 
Huh? No. Then I got just two words for you. Shut up and forget about it. Your life is interesting. Why not have all the answers? It's right in your own and you can now at all FAO Sports. KB Toys and Toys R Us Toys. 1214 at 560 WQA. Miguel, another 45 minutes out there. Bill Seidel on in the debut on the university between Sterling and Griffin. How's he doing? Did he call us back or maybe he's just deluge? He's mobbed out there with the Doring fans with our best of meal CDs, cassettes, keychains, and T-shirts. All for our benefit of Planned Parenthood. Uh, 285 votes in our poll. Will George Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the Tuesday's election? I mean, it's razor tight. 146 say... Yeah. And 139 say no. We're not asking who you're voting for. We can't take that kind of a poll anyway, because it gets all screwed up by the Bush people. We're just asking what you think. Is this going to make a difference? Not in how you vote necessarily, but in uh, the outcome of the election. Here's Carl Gables. Hello. Hi, Neil. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, just for those two prior callers, go both ways. Where's Al Gore's DUIs? Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, the caller before that, you know, sometimes even the police state gets it right, pal. They got George Bush off the road. And uh, he's just a walking contradiction, Neil, and it's sort of like their stated message. Yeah, well, it's just like that whole thing about compassionate conservatism. It's just a lie. It's a, it, they've taken the same thing and they've packaged it in a more attractive uh, uh, setting and wrapping, and now uh, they're peddling it. Well, and they, people are buying it. Look, they're, his core message is trusting youth, trusting us with our Social Security. We trust you. We trust you. In his youth, was he trustworthy? I mean, yeah. what a contradiction. And how come he doesn't trust women to make decisions about their own uh, personal lives and everybody else, too? Oh, yeah, getting government out of our lives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, exactly. We trust you except when it comes to making your own personal decisions. Exactly. Have a great day, Pat. Thank I'll you, Neil. Bye. Vote 40 or 50 times, please. It's essential. You can smell You can smell that scent like an, like an animal, like a deer getting panicky in the woods, you know? You can smell the scent of panic in the bush camp. Can you smell it? Yeah, Miguel has one hundred and eighty dollars. Pretty, pretty weak. That's what he said. One hundred and eighty bucks. Every time these guys go out in the van, it's a thousand. Uh, almost always, we do a thousand in two hours. One hundred eighty bucks. I'm not going to say any more about that. I just want to say this: next time our sales department decides to uh, start dicking around with our fundraiser, I'm just not going to promote it on the air. How's that? Huh? That sounds reasonable to me. Manipulating and using. They've been doing it ever since I came to this radio station. It is unfreaking acceptable. Here's Oakland Park. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, uh, sir. Sorry, I need to switch tracks for a minute. Go ahead. Um, uh, aren't there uh, judges up for election this election? Yeah. Um, how much I don't know anything about them. Oh. I don't yeah. know anything about the people in Plantation Acres on the... Uh, there's all kinds of other stuff. I just haven't... Uh, I've, I've been trying to find... Inter- you know, the interesting thing is this weekend, like in the Sunday papers, yeah. that'll have the rundown on everybody that's on the ballot. They'll have the sample ballots. Yeah, well, I've got a sample ballot right here. It uh, says who's up for election. But I mean, it'll have some information about them. Okay. Uh, just uh, pretty much a summary, nothing deep, like uh, what, they, you know, what their record has been like. Yeah, that'll be in there. Okay. Sunday, both papers. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Good luck to us. I just, I gotta admit, I just haven't had the time to go into all of that. Who the hell does? I'm voting for Bill Nelson, I'm voting for Al Gore. Anything else on there, I'll just go, kind of like that. Here's Deerfield Beach, hello. Deerfield Beach. Oh, hello. Um, since Sunday is your birthday, yes. I'm calling today to wish you a happy birthday. Well, thank you so much. And all my nephews wish you the same. Happy for them. And that's it. Now, I voted last week, absentee ballot. Yeah, you told us this the other day. Uh, yeah, but I, think I didn't absentee tell you. Is the, yeah. Our man will win. Yes. I'm telling you. You mock my words. And if we if we lose, I hear that uh, George W. is buying free drinks for everybody, yeah. so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Okay, as long as you You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What? What are you looking at, uh, Guido? Nothing. I said, Zyga Zunt, you've got like a, a look on your push. I like her. And yeah, Italian. We all like her. That's the thanks for calling, lady. We love her. You know what she says. They don't take any bullshit from him. That's what she says. And how long has uh, she been with you? Oh, Years back to IOD, many many years. 
she, she's loyal and she's uh, she's just a nice person. She's not one to call to wish me happy birthday. She don't want to argue. She went out and voted 30 or 40 times for Gore, and that's it. And we're all set and we're happy. As opposed to all these hostile, hysterical people. You know, the ones who really bug me, I like the guy about three calls ago, ranting and raving and whining about, oh, what are we going to We're going to hell in a handbasket, and what are we going to do? And like, like the sky is falling. The sky is not falling. It's not the end of the world. And no matter who wins on Tuesday, somehow we'll survive. We'll overcome it. And life will go on. What's that? That's not another card, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. You want to open it up? My class. I want to open it up and see it. I'll let you open it because it looks a little thick to me. It might be something inside. It might be from the Bush or campaign headquarters. What does it say? It says, Uncle Neil, have a wild and wonderful yeah. kick-ass birthday. All the best, Sherry and Lon Jacobson. Thanks for all the hours of fun, wit, and wisdom. Uh, P.S. Would you like us to frame Sherry and Lou. Toronto Prince? Would I like what? Would you like them to frame your Toronto print? No. And uh, they throw a business card in here from Art and Custom Framing. Thanks, Jerry and Lou. No, no thanks, but uh, thanks anyway. Here's Hallandale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Okay, Neil, I'm so glad that the news got out yesterday so we don't have to worry about Anheuser Bush now uh, becoming president again. <laughs> I like that. It's your voice. That's good. But I think that I have a solution anyway. You know, I have about at least 25 death fans in Miami that are going to be bowling on Tuesday for Mr. Al Gore. All right. Um, last week I sent you actually a fax about the uh, Bush uh, Dream Supreme Court. I don't know whether you, whether you got that. That was in the New York Times. Yeah, that was great. I tell you, you know, I'm glad that this led out, and uh, you know what? You know you are gay. I love you anyway, Neil. Okay. Have a good one. See ya. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. What the hell was he saying? Something about Mary Cohen? You're gay. Oh. 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Boy, this is great. Hmm? This made our day. This made it worth coming in today in spite of being sick. Mm -mm -mm. No bread. Cold cuts, cheese, sliced cheese, tomatoes, onions, olives. I would have never thought to get this. No, because you great. Because you wind up eating all the bread with the sandwiches, which are great, but you can have uh, all of this without the sandwich. It's better for you without the bread. So thanks again, Atlantic City Subs, and like I said, dummy up. Here's Orlando. Hello. Uh, hey, Neil. Yeah. Uh, it was funny this morning after all this stuff came out on the Today Show, there was a commercial that came on up here right after that, and it's it's the W saying, it's about personal responsibility. And that is, that's the theme of his campaign, personal responsibility. Right, and lying and lying and then making an excuse. I mean, that's the lamest excuse I ever heard in my life. He didn't want his daughters to uh, follow in his footsteps. He didn't want them to know that. I mean, look, uh, there are plenty of things that people do, much worse than a DUI, and they don't hide it from their kids. I, I mean, are his kids emotional cripples that because he did something 24 years ago, they're going to start going out and drinking and driving? That's pretty stupid to me. Well, you know, it's in the genes because, uh, you know, he was a donor. But uh, the thing, uh, the other thing is, is with this, uh, this other thing about not a drop of alcohol since 86, I mean, it's true on that... GWBush.com, they've got the video of him slamming down the bourbons in 92. Do they really? Yeah. GWBush.com? Yeah, it's it's the video, and it's him, and he's he's drunker than a skunk. It's, <laughs> and it's, 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 it's August 29th, 1992. Next break, I'm going to it. I'm going to hop right on it. It's a party. Okay, thanks. See ya. All right, I can't wait to see that. Hey, uh, what do you got to say about that, W? <laughs> oh, come on. Not another lie. Not caught up in all these lies. And see, of course, that would be significant because not only is it another lie, but it would indicate that he hasn't uh, kicked the booze problem and he still has a, uh, a substance problem. And I think people have a right to know that. Uh -huh. Instead of all these generalities about, well, it could be this, well, it could be... But it, but it isn't, see, it's him. It's him. Scrape away the Teflon and quit trying to protect him. Just because he's dumb. Sonny Isles, hello. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Hey, when was he the owner of the uh, Texas team? You when know? was he the owner? Yeah. Was oh, that less than 20 years ago? I'd have to look it up. It was less than 20 years, right? Yeah. Because he was drunk in there many times. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Hey, uh, less government, you know what that means? Like, people like Firestone's going to be making more decisions in your life. How right. Right, and the big oil companies, right? Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather the pharmaceutical the companies and the National Rifle Association and Philip Morris. Yeah. Yeah, they're just, you know what the problem is? They're pissed off. The masses are happy, and they're just sort of they're upset. Things aren't bad. 
<laughs> okay. He's right. Things aren't bad. So that that's what uh, just perplexes me. I don't I don't understand why anybody uh, wants to change course. Things aren't bad. So you know, Bubba had a couple of blowjobs in there. What's what's wrong with that? Anybody that uh, you know begrudges the president a few blowjobs here and there, mind your own damn business. And if you were married to Swillery, the Ice Princess Bullbike, I mean, you'd probably be getting some on the side too, wouldn't you? Uh -huh. You bet your sweet ass. I think he's been a high, uh, highly admired for that. The ones that we ought to be pissed off about are these fabulous right-wing hypocrites who wasted all your tax money with this big, massive uh, in investigation and embarrassment all over the world. And to a man, every single world leader just couldn't believe they were laughing at us. What a bunch of juvenile assholes we are in this country, making a big deal out of the president's peccadillos. Disgrace. I can't wait to hop on that website. Thank God I invested. It's really great. I got the computer here that I bought. Nice new fax machine slash copy machine that I bought. Great uh, TV that Jeff Cohen gave to us. Our satellite dish that was given to us by uh, those satellite people, which I don't know at the moment, but whatever. It's called Build Your Own Studio, Neil, because the Beasleys are a bunch of cheap pricks. That's what it's called. We did a pretty good job. Oh! It's taken us a little over three years now, but we're putting together a real studio now. It's that state-of-the-art studio that Greg promised you, Neil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of that, did we get any cigars from Frank no. out there in sales? No, I don't think so. The days and the weeks and the months keep rolling by. I, he, you know something? I don't think he sells anything because I don't have any spots from him on this show other than this which he inherited. So that's probably how he's making money on the side. He's selling stogies like out on the street corner of 441 over there by Chuck's. He sold the title sponsorship to my show. Frank? Well, he, he, or not. He's still an asshole. I don't, I, you know, I mean, I'm happy for him, but he's still an asshole. Now, I hope it wasn't something that you're supposed to be getting things from them. Oh, no. They're good. Because if it were, you'd never get them. Oh, look at that. George W. almost just fell off the... Uh, <laughs> what's he doing? Getting off a plane or getting uh, going down the steps from a platform? Almost just fell on his ass, a la Gerald Ford. I wonder if he's chewing gum, too. 5670560. Oh, you think he drinks a lot of Diet Coke? Huh? Sure. Oh, no. I mean, the people that used to have a booze problem, most of them drink a lot of Diet Coke. Like by the gallon. Gallons full. With caffeine. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, you happy belated birthday. Thank you. Uh, WSVN has the same uh, poll question that you're asking. What is it? WSVN, Ricky Ticky Station. And how's it coming out? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to vote there. I'm going to vote on yours. Okay. <laughs> He'd probably get the scoop from Brian Andrews. Okay, thanks. Whatever you said. Chronic. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless lines. Out of town line is open. They can't hear us on the West Coast. They're busy with that stupid stock market show. Oh, here's Jonathan Alter. Some voters, especially undecided voters, to take another look at George W. Bush before they, they make that leap. Uh, the challenger always has a higher burden, John, in these uh, elections. He has to essentially fire current management, get people to take a little bit of a gamble on him since he's the outside guy. And at this point, uh, it may have the effect of... Uh, Getting people to say, let's look a little deeper into this. There are some un unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. I, I, let me just read you something because we are getting reaction throughout the day to this story about Governor George W. Bush's DUI 24 years ago in the state of Maine. And this is the statement 
from Millie Webb. Mm -hmm. She's the president of MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and she said, as Governor Bush's conviction happened nearly 25 years ago, we hope that that experience had an impact on his life and helped him to realize the devastation that can result from getting behind the wheel after drinking alcohol. We recognize that people can change, and we appreciate Governor Bush's support of anti-drunk driving legislation in Texas. And they also praise uh, Vice President Gore for his support of anti-drunk driving legislation. So that sort of uh, yeah. shooting right down the middle on this issue. I think the problem with that for Bush, John, is I've gotten three calls on my voicemail today from people pointing out that this incident took place in 1976 when Bush was 30, but he didn't quit drinking by his own account until he was 40. So that 10-year period there raises the question, did he, when he was continuing to drink, also continue to drink and drive? He doesn't crap, apparently. Uh, but did the behavior really change? He said last night uh, that he learned his lesson at the time. I think uh, it's an open question now, since there was another 10 years of drinking, uh, whether he really did. And we'll see whether he comes out and answers some of these remaining questions. Okay, thanks, Jonathan Alter, there on MSNBC, who wrote that great piece on NATO and Newsweek this week. I'm, I'm going with MSNBC from now on. CNN sucks. MSNBC, I mean, they're polling and the guests they have on and everything that they've got on there is like, and then the uh, hosts, other than that uh, goofball. Well, oh, he's not on MSNBC anyway, is he? On softballs, I think he's on CNBC. Softball. Here's Miami. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Great show. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I got four quick points. Okay. I was channel surfing last night real late, and they were uh, having to catch us on C-SPAN, uh, campaign rally in Orlando with Dick Cheney. And I like, you know, I've never seen Dick Cheney this whole campaign. They've hidden him, you know. Anyway, Alan Simpson, I think that was his name, uh -huh. the former Republican senator from Wyoming. Right. Yeah. Okay. He was introducing uh, tanker compassionate Jeb, uh, so Jeb could introduce Cheney. But anyway, Alan says, they're stirring a witch's brew up there in Washington, and Joe Lieberman is ladling it out. Maybe it's a little anti-Semitic there. He's ladling it out. And maybe, maybe, just, maybe it's only chicken soup. <laughs> Listen, I just want to say, let no one doubt, this is an election about going forward or going back. Right. Bush wants to pull back the social progress <clears throat> that women, blacks, Jews, Latins, gays, and other minorities have made the past 30 years. Wants to pull our troops out of NATO. And through the Supreme Court, seal it with a kiss. Right. And make no mistake, this is an election of hate. And I appeal to your listeners to vote for the United States to become an inclusive place where we really try to work together as a team and treat everyone as equal. Vote Al Gore. Well said. Thanks. Thanks. That's the best call we've had all year hey! on this election. I'll tell you that. Short and sweet. That's the difference. And very and not well disguised. I mean, I realize there are a lot of stupid people out there. So when you come up with these cliches, you know, compassionate conservatism and all this other bull crap, you know, it, it's a better shield than they had like four years and eight years ago when Pat Buchanan was running around singing Deutschland über alles. And people said, "Ooh, a little bit too scary for me." But anybody that really stops and looks at it and sees where they're coming from and who the people are behind them and around them, uh, you gotta run. You gotta run like hell. And now that we're starting to see that all this uh, bullcrap about how honorable he is and bringing morality back and decency and all, uh, bullcrap, bullcrap. Guy born with a goddamn silver spoon in his mouth that bums around and is a drunk and a scumbag till he's 40 years old and now allegedly uh, found Christ and allegedly ain't drinking no more, which I, I still haven't checked that damn thing. Don't let me forget. On the next break. Here's Weston. Hello. Weston. With the radio turned way up. Going once. Going twice. West. Hello, can you hear me? I hear you, yeah. All right. Hey, listen, two questions. One about this campaign finance reform. Can yes. Explain to me how you got a Democratic president right now, you got a Republican, well, you got a you know, Republican majority Congress. Mm -hmm. how, how's this uh, going to be passed if Gore gets as the president? And you got the same Republican Congress. Well, you're not going to have the same Republican Congress. The whole the whole uh, House is up for the election now, and there's a real good chance the Democrats are going to win back the House, and there's a slim chance they'll win back the Senate, too. There's a hell of a chance. So he's basing on passing this that he's going to get the uh, Congress in his favor. That's the only way he's going to pass this. No, I mean, uh, John McCain's not a Democrat. Right, so it's a co-sponsor. He's, he, he's got to get, well, yes, uh, you, uh, you got Russ Feingold and John McCain, one Democrat and one Republican. Right, but he, okay, He's got so to get a certain number of Republicans that they're never going to get it passed. So... 
In other words, he's got to get a, a Democratic Congress or else it's not going to go in. So, on that. No, it would help. It would help. So let me ask you a question about this. Oh, well, I'll, I'll say this. Not all Democrats support campaign finance reform. It's yeah, understood. Yeah, they've got to do their politics and all that That's stuff. That's correct. Now, based on last night, I, believe it or not, I was on the fence. I'm voting for Bush because yeah. of what happened yesterday. Uh-huh. And explain, where did this guy have to actually lie about the drug driving? We, did, we just got to uh, putting the thing on the air here a few minutes ago. You had to have heard it. Well, no, I, I mean, I've watched all of it last night. And they broke and all that. Where did he lie, though? I mean, it, to me, he admitted when they confronted him. No, he did not. No, he, he admitted it now because now they got they got the record from the uh, police in Maine, from the uh, police blotter in Maine. But well, when did he deny it prior to this? He denied it when he was interviewed in 1996 by Wayne Slater of the Dallas Morning News. They asked him if he was ever arrested after 1968, and he said no. Sir? Oh, yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I didn't hear that. I'm, well, I'm trying to observe that. I just put it on. We just we just played it on the air here a little while ago. So he, he admitted that information until confronted. He denied it until he was confronted. That's until correct. Confronted. Uh -huh. but, but Bubba and Gore, they just continue to deny when confronted. About what? Whatever you confront them with. Well, what was, what was Gore being confronted with? Smoking marijuana? He didn't deny it. What else? Well, about the Buddhist temple. No, no, we're not, we're not talking about Buddhist temple. We're not talking about we're campaign. Talking about no, no, we're talking about a man who says he's going to bring morality and decency back to the White House, which is code for no hanky-panky and no personal immorality. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about Monica Lewinsky and blowjobs. And, sir, if I have to draw you a diagram of that, I, I just don't have the time. He's voting for Bush because of what happened last night. <laughs> Bottoms up, pal. Have one for us. This pud's for you. 22 till 1 at 560 QAM. This Another is attempt. 560 QAM. If it's free, it's me. In theaters now, from the producer of Blair Witch 2, it's the Blair Bitch. Christopher, clean your room! It looks like a hellhole! And how many times have I told you to clean that sick, sick, sick off of your scalp? Warm off your clothing hook! You're chucking mud! And I just vacuum the fiery depths of hell! The Blair Bitch. She could be anywhere. Where is your pitchfork, young man? You're grounded! No more damnation for you! Okay, 60 to 1 at 560 WQM. This uh, website is sensational. It's, um... <laughs> it's the beer hat dance. Slim Cheney. Okay, great. This is uh, GWBush.com. Let me just go back. Because I, I got to, because uh, this is so complicated, where the hell am I going to find the one with the picture that he's talking about where he sloshed out of his mind? This is one of the sites that they tried to kill. The Bush people, they tried to bury this one. But it's still there, baby. Oh! GWBush.com. It's a beautiful thing. My favorite, though, is the one where he's, his head is like moving around. He's got the, the, the bottle of beer in his hand. I bet you it's a bush. Here's Plantation. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. How are you? Okay. Uh, I just wanted to point out that whoever wins on Tuesday is going to become Commander-in-Chief of the military. And I seem to recall from my time in the military that you cannot get a, a high enough security clearance with a DUI or a failure to report one. Really? Yeah, that's my recollection. It happened to me where I, you needed, I needed an ultra, which is part of the top secret. Uh -huh. And I was uh, forced to settle for a secret. Uh, I wonder if the same thing will affect Bush or uh, Cheney. Ditto. Good point. All right, sir. Thank you. Happy birthday. And thanks very much. Yeah, and Cheney's got two DUIs, so between the two of them, they got a uh, tree. They got a trifecta. In fact, maybe they drive into a tree. See, one good thing, though, about the president and vice president, they don't drive their own cars. See, that, that's good. Keep them off the road. Here's Plantation. Hello. Uh, yeah, Neil? Yes, sir. Hi. Listen, I wanted to make two points, uh, if I could. One. Are you on a speakerphone? Yeah, is it bothering you? Oh, terrible. Okay. How's that? Much better. better. Okay, one, uh, I wanted to point out that during the, uh, the, all through the debates, when they were grilling Gore about his role with the Buddhist temple, so uh -huh. Bush was always taking the high road and going, people should be accountable for their actions, so they should be accountable for what they do. 
And now if something happens to him, here comes the check for him, you know, and he's ready to pass it off. And mm-hmm. he doesn't want to take accountability for it. And uh, the second point I wanted to make is that, you know, back when Clinton was putting in the legislation trying to, you know, improve the economy, bring us out of the spending and the national deficit and so forth, the Republican-controlled Congress was saying, we're not voting for this. We, they even stood up. I think I remember Ginter standing up and saying, uh, we, we're not getting one Republican vote. We don't want to take the blame for this. And now that things are going good, they're all trying to take the credit. Mm-hmm. That's not the Newt Gingrich that was standing uh, at his wife's bedside when she was dying, while he was screwing around on the side. The trying, very same one. Trying to get her to divor- sign the divorce papers. The very same one. And I just think that Bush, you know, with all of his high road, coy tactics, you know, people should be accountable for their actions. Well, here comes the check for what you did back then, buddy, and it's time you paid for it. Amen. Thank you, Nick. Well said. Thank you. Yeah, maybe somebody will call you, whoever called me to tip me off on this website, and tell you where I'll find that. Did they call? No, but uh, Eric, our guy, is dissecting the site, had trouble like we did, found it, and is putting it on our site. The picture of him, you know, drunk out of his mind? The whole video, yeah. All right! Oh, yeah! <laughs> All right! Nice going, Eric, baby! Woo, so I guess I can go back, huh? I can go back home. One moment, please. Oh, God. Greatest day of my life. Not only not the day that I bought this computer, but the day that we finally had to go through legal means to force them to hook it up so that we can use it, which may sound ridiculous to you, but that's a true story. That's the Beasley effing way, baby. That's the Bob Vermouth over there on the West Coast. <laughs> Real jackass. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yes, Bill. Yes, uh, well, you said about uh, Gore and, uh, and Bill Nelson, obviously in total agreement. With you, but please don't forget Elaine Bloom. I raised a lot of money for her, just got done throwing parties for her. I have to tell you a great story about Clay Shaw. I was at a meeting, um, because I was along with Elaine Bloom, and where, uh, you know, originally her ad said, uh, she, he voted over 90% of the time with, uh, Newt Gingrich. Mm-hmm. And the guy is stupid enough to stand up at this meeting and say, you know, you lied again, Elaine. I only voted 87.6% of the time <laughs> with Elaine Blue, with, with Newt Gingrich. Uh-huh. And, you know, Elaine did not even know what to do. I mean, what, you know, the man is a freaking moron. He, you know, time has passed and by 10, 10 terms, 20 years, he's got such seniority that it's time for him to move on. So when you tell, you know, people, just please add their name because it's a very close race with seven seats from taking the United States House of Representatives away from the Republicans. Amen. And I'm for a Ford. Well Thank said. You. Thanks. Okay, Elaine, forgot about her. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless Line. Here's a mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, as I was waiting, I heard you talk about that website. It is a video. It actually shows uh, Bush toasting a couple or something. Right. Right. It'd be hard to prove he's drunk, but he looks like it. Well, they're putting it on our website, so I'll be able to take a look at it in a minute. Hey, the reason I called, I'm a firefighter up here in the Palm Beach County area. Right. And um, the the, uh, the state version of our union is called the Florida Professional Firefighters. Is The president's a guy named Bob Carver, who's a, like a sleazy piece of junk. I don't know how he ever got in there, but he and some of his cronies up in the Tallahassee area have endorsed, have come out and said the professional firefighters endorse Bush. But I don't know of any local, and I know the international is definitely a supporters of Gore. Uh-huh. But word through the, you know, firemen keep no secrets. Where has this guy's been promised a Washington job through Jeb Bush once, uh, once and if uh, his brother gets voted in? So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to let your listeners know that the vast, vast, vast majority of firefighters support Gore, and just because this professional organization comes out and says that they're endorsing Bush, it's just a political payoff. Okay. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Okay, now, is this, how long is it going to be before that's on? Because I'm salivating. I'm filming at the mouth for that. Uh, a listener gave me some instructions, so in this next break, I'll come in there and we'll do it. Oh, i got to go back like to a, that? It's like a five-step process. Okay. I can step on it? 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. The plot is thickening, baby. On the top of the fold, Bush campaign discloses old flea, and so it raises some interesting strategic issues for the Gore campaign as well as the Bush campaign. Officially, the Gore campaign has been very clear: no comment. Their candidate will have no comment. None of the officials of the campaign will have no comment. Neither would any of the top officials from the Iowa campaign have any comment for us. They think it's best just to step back and let the story play out. It's unpredictable to know how people will respond to this, but Sheila Jackson Lee, who is often an outspoken congressman from Texas, did have this to say on MSNBC. George Bush has tried to make character, credibility, and leadership skills an issue of the day as we go into the last days of the campaign. Now there's a question whether or not he can be a leader of this country, whether he has credibility, and whether he has character. I'm George Give me the best, baby. Here's a, a lady in Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. Neil, I just want to let you know that as a woman, I am really, truly scared of the prospect of Bush being our next president. And with good reason. Okay. And Bush is a man, obviously, and all these other men out here who get out in these rallies in front of the clinics and anti-abortion this and da-da-da. They don't ever have to worry about being in the position mm -hmm. to make a choice like that. That's right. And what I have to say to Bush and all his followers is keep your hands off my uterus. Amen. Thank you. Okay, and get Bye -bye. those hands on the uh, ballot box. That's right. Keep your hands off her uterus. Exactly correct. All these fetus squeezers. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Wonder why it did come out right before the campaign, clearly implicating that it was coming from the Democrats. How do you respond to that? Well, that's quite a spin that she's putting on it, but one really has to say, why didn't George Bush just own up to this in the beginning and say, look, when I was young, Tom Harkin. I drank a lot and I had a DUI on my record. I just want to get it out there in the open right now. Why didn't he do that earlier? I mean, it was sort of, why did they try to cover it up for so long? And it just, again, makes you wonder. Is there something else that might come out after the election that we still don't know about? There you go. That's what people are asking right now. Is there something else? Like maybe that abortion, huh? Which was a felony. Let me say it again. Roe v. Wade, 1973. The alleged abortion took place in 1970. When it was a against the law, it would have been a felony. The abortion in which he allegedly, according to that rumor, that wild story, which may or may not be true, knocked the broad up and took her and drove her there and, uh, of course, the rich family paying for the abortion. Lots more where, where there's smoke, there's fire, which sometimes is true and sometimes it's not, but in this case you've got to believe it because here's a guy who admittedly was a sleazebag until he was 40 years old and who keeps dodging and being evasive and won't answer this and won't answer that and nothing that happened before such and such a date. Sorry, anybody with a brain shouldn't be buying that. Here's Fort Myers. Hello. Yes, good afternoon, Neil. Yes, sir. Listen, uh, FEMA is federal, correct? What is it? FEMA, you know, federal emergency. Well, you know how Bush, yeah. he preaches less government. Uh-huh. Well, you know, over the last ten years in this country, Neil, we've had some pretty major natural disasters. Yes. So, you know, we've been lucky. The, the weather's nice right now. Tropical storm winds aren't blowing. But I'd just like to remind people before they vote Tuesday... If they're going to vote for George Bush, they're voting for less government. Well, less government would mean less help when the tornadoes start touching down, when tropical storms start blowing their roofs off their mansions, and generally it's the Republicans that are always wanting something for that's free. The, that's the only kind of blowing that they don't care about. <laughs> thanks, Neil. Hey, have a great birthday. Smoke a big one. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, big fat one. Uh, you call me a big fat one? Five six seven oh five sixty pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Oh, that'll be great. Over the weekend, everybody can take a look at that. George W. on our... We're actually going to have that on the website? That's what he, uh, he's working oh, on. Oh, right I'm squeezing my toes. I'm so excited right now. I might even squeeze something else. I'm giddy with excitement. Here's Hollywood. Hello. What? Hollywood. The easiest way for us to connect. Uh, what kind of quarterback is... <laughs> what the hell was that? What was that? Sounded like somebody talking out of his rectum. Oh, man. Sounded like he had one of those bullhorns in his rectum. Bullshmit. 1255 at 560 QAM. This is 560 QAM. Don't you just hate people that use snappy openers for their show segments like that one to two hour?
Waitress, I'm going downtown, baby, be good. She's so sweet, 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 sweet
Here's a mobile in West Palm. Hello. Neil? Yes, sir. How you doing? All right. A um, couple points I want you to make. Uh, number one, how many DUI arrests have you not told us about, has he not admitted to? Uh-huh. Uh, and the other thing is he's been in government and, ba and the banking industry his entire life. Anytime you're in these, you have to fill out applications that ask you whether or not you've ever been uh, arrested or convicted of a crime. Uh -huh. And obviously he's always written no because these are public records that anybody has access to and certainly uh, they've, you know, they've been scrutinized and there's, you know, nobody's ever seen that he's been arrested or convicted of a crime. Uh -huh. I hope somebody now goes and takes a look, uh, a look at these documents because this guy lied. There's no question that he was asked on some form when he filled out to go into government office or when he went to get a loan for uh, a bank or whatever uh, loan he, you know, whatever he would have needed a loan for, they would have asked him, have you ever been arrested or convicted of a crime? Mm -hmm. Obviously, he would have answered no, or we would know about it, and obviously he's well, lying. I don't know if those forms say a crime or if they say a felony. I don't know whether it says... Normally, what they'll say is they'll say, have you ever been arrested or convicted of uh, a crime? They normally will say crime. I, they don't normally say felony. Uh -huh. um, they may say misdemeanor, but this, uh, you know, it is a misdemeanor. And it's not just a traffic ticket, it's uh, it's a criminal uh, offense. Right. DUI is a criminal offense, uh -huh. and he was convicted of it. So I'm just hoping somebody's out there pouring through those documents, because there's no question that... I, I think the fact that in just a short period of time, they already got the, the reporter from the Dallas Morning News to come forward, Walt, uh, Wayne Slater, who remembers very vividly the interview in which he lied to him and said that he had no arrest um, after 1968. I mean, that, that's just the beginning. That happened in just a few hours. Right. Well, that's the beginning, but that's just an interview. That's not an official proceeding or right. an official no, document. I understand. Right. So when they get here, I mean, they're going to see that there's some official document that he signed off on in which he says, no, I've never been arrested or convicted of a crime, and uh, both of those are lies, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that it came out. Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, did you see the Today Show the other day with Marlo Thomas? No, we had a couple calls on it, though. Yeah, she was uh, completely denouncing her, her husband, Ralph Nader, yeah, she and said, everything. She said that uh, uh, Phil, uh, Phil has her. lost his mind, yeah. You know what, though? The only thing that matters to me is I'm going to vote for the president that has the biggest penis. Well, you got Gore, then. You got him. Okay. Just take a look at the cover of Rolling Stone, baby. You got it. Take a look at it. Wow. Man. Humongous, dangerous. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Oh, this thing over here. I mean, this <laughs> this is too good to be true. I just go get drunk. Five sixty WQM. Hank is coming up at two. Hank with the Dave Wanstead show with Coach Joe Wanstead at five. Boog Shabby at six, and Eddie K from the Naples Fort Myers Dog Track at ten o'clock tonight. Punching his brains out. 
Okay, David faxes and says George W. has been uh, arrested three times, one for a fight at a football game, two for stealing a wreath from a hotel lobby, and three for DUI. Right, David, as far as we know. That's just the beginning. Like Chicago said, only the beginning. Here's Fort Myers. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. I want to respond to this, this subhuman piece of crap that called a, a while back about he's going to change his vote. To Bush, yeah, because, because of uh, well, he likes drunks. He likes that. L- let me speak to him. Let me speak up. to this jackass. Only until you've been personally affected by a drunk driver can he know what it's like. Nineteen years ago, I was hit by a drunk driver. I was with my best friend. Our car rolled cartwheeled end over end twelve to fourteen times. Right. My friend was thrown through the windshield. Uh, I suffered a fractured vertebra in my uh, cervical uh, neck mm. and I uh, had a serious gash on my left wrist. This son of a bitch, if you knew what a drunk driver can do to you mm-hmm. and how it's affected my life, you might not be so smart about what you said. Uh, you know, this is not a youthful indiscretion. He was almost 31 years old. Right. And... Uh, this business of and, 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 and admits to continuing uh, to drink uh, for another ten years. Right. We don't know about the drinking and driving part, but at least of the drinking part. And he's going to turn the tables on Gore, right? He's going to turn the tables on Gore on this. I mean, uh, this is a guy. He tells his staff, but he doesn't tell his own family. What? What kind of? That's not a man. That's a mouse. I, oh, okay, pal. Hang in there. Thanks. New York Times editorial of this today. Al Gore in the home stretch. It says Marlo Thomas has the right idea. An ardent Democrat, she went on the Today Show Thursday to reprimand her husband Phil Donahue for helping Ralph Nader spread the spread the fallacious message that it makes no difference whether Al Gore or George W. Bush wins the presidency. Miss Thomas said an admirable example when she said the refusal to recognize profound differences between the two candidates may, has made her come out fighting. Her action ought to signal Gore supporters everywhere to put on a burst of energy and not be intimidated by the triumphalist theater of the Bush campaign. Borrowing a page from Ronald Reagan's playbook, Governor Bush is trying to act as if he has this thing in the bag. But the fact is, this presidential election is up for grabs. With four days left of the campaign, Vice President Gore is ahead gaining or highly competitive in the swing states that will decide the outcome. The polls can't measure another advantage that Mr. Gore could enjoy on Election Day, and that's the potential for a heavier turnout by Democrats than Republicans. Two years ago, an unexpectedly high vote among the party's traditional constituencies, labor, working women, minorities, environmentalists, helped Democrats gain five seats in the House, much to the surprise of most pollsters and political experts. This year, turnout can tip the election in key states of the Northeast, Midwest, and Pacific Coast, no matter how big the majority is that Mr. Bush racks up in the Sun Belt and the Rockies. If Marlo Thomas can give her husband a civics lesson on national television, then, <clears throat> then surely the mainstream voters who have a stake in the continued prosperity and fair tax and social policies can cast a skeptical eye on the Bush spin. The Republican nominee wants to gull the country into thinking this election is over by taking a premature victory lap or drink. Whether Mr. Bush's hubris is real or feigned, no one should be fooled by it. The reality is that this race hasn't reached the finish line, and if Mr. Gore's supporters will match their energy to his, he can cross it first. Oh! This is the New York Times. The George Bush video is up on NeilRogers.com. Oh! oh! I think I just scored, scored. had an accident in my pants. How do you like that? Let me, let me take it. What well, do we got? 404 votes on our poll. And the fact that it's that high, I'm, you know, I'm dubious about how many of them are real. Will George W. Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome on Tuesday? 211 say yes, 193 say no. And the fact that it's even close should give pause. To a lot of people out there who think that folks are just going to say, well, that was a long time ago. Okay, home page. Let's take a look at this. I may have another accident. This thing don't hurry up and, uh, there we go. One moment, please. There it is. <laughs> Eric, you're the best, sweetheart. Oh! Send him a bunch of food, okay? Keep him fat. Uh, send him a bunch of food. George W. Bush Jr. Starred in, stars in Wedded Diss, Drunk or Sober, You Decide, August 29, 1992. And there it is on neilrogers.com. You've got all weekend, you and all your friends and everybody in the world can go to our website and take a puke of that. And be sure to watch it all the way through right to the very end when he uh, <laughs> bottoms up it, when he chugs down the last part of that beverage that was in that class, whatever. I'm sure it was just uh, ginger ale. Here's Margate. Hello. 
Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Happy birthday. Thank you. I, uh, I'm a long time listener. I changed my jobs around now, so I don't get to call much. Um, I happened to catch something yesterday on the uh, 10, the uh, Channel 10 News. Mm -hmm. the Channel 10. Uh, they did an article on pollution, right? That the some big college study just came in. It has nothing to do with politics, supposedly on pollution affecting up to 25% of children in school, school-age children, where it's learning disabilities, all kinds of facts that they come up with on it. And uh, I think it was uh, Joe Andrew. Uh, but anyway, so what the uh, what the gist of the situation was that pollution is causing terrible learning disability problems among young children. And the strangest part of it was at at the end of the thing, they give a list where the pollution is coming from. Guess who number two was? Texas. Yeah. And uh, the strange thing is, is right after that, they flashed the campaign ad for uh, GW. And GW's ad is uh, one of these negative ads that tell you, well, Bush polluted uh, Tennessee, and here's this beautiful blue sky over Texas. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it really makes you want to throw up. Yeah, well, all they have to do is look at the uh, thing about Houston. There was a big piece in the New York Times or Newsweek last week, and they showed photographs on a day when it made Los Angeles look clear as a bell. It's, 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 it's so polluted in Houston that they can't even let the kids out some days to go out in uh, gym class and uh, play football or whatever because the pollution is so bad and the kids are getting asthma from it. I know, this, this election should be a landslide. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's ridiculous. How did this guy get to do this? He, seems to be, nobody ever listened. You know, the article you have there, that's been on the web for months. I know. And uh, we'll be trying to get it to you, but I, probably this is the most apropos moment. I couldn't think of a better time. Timing is good. Thanks a lot, Paul. Okay, thank you. Vote about 80 times. Just to be <laughs> okay. Listen to Motorsports Saturday. How come you didn't remind me about this? The nephew just came in and handed me this, and I said I would uh, be glad to plug it. And the show, too. Listen to Motorsports Saturday with Joe Costello tomorrow morning from 6 to 7 a.m. for your chance to win one of three pair of race tickets to the Penzo 400 to Homestead Miami Speedway November 12th. Compliments of discount auto parts. See, if you would have hocked me again about that, I would have done it, but we were busy doing this. But there it is. That was more fun. Oh, this was a lot more fun and much more significant. Oh, i gotta, I got to watch that again, just over and over again, especially that last three or four seconds there when he goes <laughs> like that. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, I am. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Good. I'm a follower of yours since uh, before George Bush got drunk. Yeah. Since those days, but I, I have a little a little problem with the way you're presenting things. And I, you why know, is I that? What, just, is it, what does that mean? Well, I think, I'm getting my opinions. Is that bad? No, 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 not at all. Oh. Not at all. I'm, I'm very glad you do. As a matter of fact, usually you're very fair. Uh, I'm withholding my vote this year. I, I just can't vote for either one of them, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Uh, George Bush obviously has the record that everybody knows about with the, you know, with what went on in Texas and the drinking and all that stuff. On the other hand, well, not, I, not, not just the drinking. I mean, that's just the frosting on the cake. His platform and what he stands for and what he has stood for. That's uh, that's the biggest part of it to me. I'm not voting so much for Gore. I'm voting against Bush. Well, I, I agree. I'm, I'm voting. I'm voting against Jesse Helms. I'm voting against Strom Thurmond. I'm voting against Trent Lott and Tom Delay. I'm voting against Pat Robertson. I'm voting against all these far and right wing lunatics. That's that's what uh, he's all about. I, I I agree with you on that point. But the problem that I have with Gore is. You know, the man has cha has also flip flopped many times. He's aligned himself with with uh, I believe it was Reverend Phelps, is what I'm hearing. Back no, in no, he, no, he has not aligned himself with Reverend Phelps. That that's ridiculous. With well, Fred Phelps, that's a lie. That, I I, I didn't make that lie. up. I'm telling you what I heard. What, what, what you heard? You heard it through the grapevine. What, what does that mean? What you heard? I heard it on. I, well, I'm going to tell you right now. When it comes to gay rights, Al Gore is uh, Clinton was good. He was the best president for gay rights in the history of this country. Al Gore is a hundred yards ahead of him. You, you may be right, like I. No, no, I, it's not that I may be right. I could have told you that six months ago. I could have told you that two years ago. Okay. So the, the idea that he was in any way connected with that obnoxious Fred Phelps from Kansas, the the ultimate homophobe of the world, is somebody whoever told you that was feeding you crap. Well, like I it said, I haven't my, heard of it. It makes my blood boil to hear something that ridiculous. Well, you know, like I said, I'm, I, I'd rather take your word than where I heard. No, it. I, I know it for a fact. All right, but on the other hand, I mean, Al Gore. If he, you know, was also a, a, a drug user, and by the way, I don't condemn anybody. Well, what do you mean a drug user? He smoked marijuana. So what about it? And nothing. He, and, he, and he didn't lie about it. Nothing. So no. then why would you? But I'm, that saying, out? but I'm saying he also did these things. He also is a man that. He, what, what do you mean he did these things? Are you comparing somebody smoking a, a little bit of marijuana or however much he smoked with somebody who was a drug addict and a, and a, and a drunk? 
No. Are, are you really that naive that there's a comparison between somebody who smokes pot and somebody who's uh, uh, addicted to uh, cocaine or, or booze? No. No, not at all. So then why do you say he did these things? Well, I mean, yeah, you, you know, with... No, he's not... He, if what you're saying is he's not perfect, that's correct. And I don't right, know anybody but, who is. No, but when we're talking about a package of a candidate, for example, Al Gore is talking about cutting taxes for the middle-income man. At the same time, the man has voted to increase taxes three times, including for senior citizens. Yeah. I mean, he's saying one thing, he's doing something else, which is what Bush does. So how can you vote for either one of these guys? You have to vote for them based on, number one, who you want to keep out, which is Bush, and number two, based on what their platform is now, not what it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Well, you know, like I said, they both have an awful lot of skeletons, and I, I find... Well, uh, your, your wimpy attitude toward it is, is shocking to me, because anybody who values rights, and to bring up Fred Phelps in the midst of this, I mean, you know, if you, if you want to see the anti-woman, anti-gay, anti-minority uh, Republicans take over the White House, then more power to you, then sit on your ass Tuesday. And then don't be surprised and don't blame us. Shame on you. God. <laughs> Here's a great fax. A great fax about Ken Starr and Newt Gingrich and Trent Lott and Henry Hyde and Bill McCollum and Bob Barr and G. Gordon Liddy and Lord S. Limbaugh and Matt Drudge and Bob Novak and on and on it goes. Nice going, sir, whoever that was. Send me that great fax. See, guys like this, I mean, he wastes a lot of my time, and I'm listening to him, and he's entitled to his opinion, but uh, he's, he's going to do nothing, which I admitted weeks ago I, was, I felt the same way. I wasn't going to bother voting. I'm voting very enthusiastically against George W. Bush on Tuesday, extremely enthusiastically. I'm voting very, very firmly against Clay Shaw and Bill McCollum on Tuesday. Got it? If you're looking for the great candidates anymore, they're few and far between. 26 after 1 at 560 WQAM. What's this obsession with hope? Goodbye, Brian Murray. You killed the team and you wouldn't smell good hockey if it bit you on the ass. For a coach, you are a stupid coach. Bill Tory must be nuts. You keep you on and you couldn't manage your checkbook. Never mind the team that at one time had all the right stuff. And it won't be too late for us to celebrate when you're the ones they train. And when you leave, don't forget Christmas, your hockey queen. You thought that you would do better than Dr. Clay. But you can't point the finger anymore when no one left to play. Goodbye, Brian Murray. You can't admit that you don't know shit about running on our TT and you're not interested in hearing why. But no matter how you try, you can't deny that you make a timer's joke Cause you make a lousy coach And as a manager you really oh. And it won't be too late for us to celebrate When you're the one they train And when you leave Don't forget Chris Moore, your hockey queen <laughs> You thought that you better than Hey, Brian. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Yeah, that, the amazing part of it is Hank left me a note uh, this morning, which we weren't sure was really from him, but it was signed to Humper, so I should have known it was. But uh, apologizing for it, he said, don't let me too much for my interview with BM. They didn't call him. He called them yesterday because the callers were ripping him in the ass because Hank, you know, was talking about how bad the team is. And, you know, and, of course, now the organization, the guys have got the flu and this and that and the moon is in Uranus and it's the uh, wrong uh, astrological sign, all these other excuses. So you can really see people r desperately scrambling to save their ass now because um, tomorrow night's D-Day, baby. 
I think if this team loses to the Washington Caps tomorrow night right here in the Macarena, and I will be there with bells on, that that could be the um, bye, bye, bye. night for the Murray boys on the same bus. Pack him a salami sandwich. In fact, we still got a few sandwiches left over here. Let's save a couple. Let's still be pretty right by after the game tomorrow night. Okay, where we go? And also, when you check on NeilRogers.com, right under George W. Bush Jr. stars in wedded this, you'll see a picture, a picture of the cover of the Nation magazine. It's got George W. with the ears of Alfred E. Newman, Alfred E. Newman Bush, and George W. Bush Jr. skeleton closet, which has got all that stuff that I was reading from before. Great job, Eric. It's all on there. All that good stuff. Excellent. Give you some real good reading over the weekend. Here's Miami. Hello. Happy birthday, Mariko. Happy birthday, Mariko. Happy birthday, Bogarho. <laughs> Happy birthday, you big Mariko. Okay, thank you. He stepped on, okay. uh, stepped on that. Nice uh, version there, sir. Nice virgin. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. He loves me, don't you understand? That's for you, sweetheart. See you tonight. Okay, where are we going? Here's uh, Miami Beach. Hello. Thank <laughs> you for laughing. That was beautiful. Felicidades, feliz cumpleaños. Muchas gracias. And I give you a report how the radio Mumbai and the other Cuban station are handling the news. Oh, I can they imagine. They should be talking about Gore's daughter drinking beer when he when she was a minor. Oh my God. And yesterday you said that the people, the callers were so bad that you may you may wish a Leanne. You are going to have a Leanne. There's brigades of Cubans going out Tuesday all day with T-shirts with the face of a Leanne and, uh, and words saying, remember a Leanne. They're going to be in all of the body. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They're going to be in the boarding place also, and this is very serious, the director of Ready Man B made a, an editorial saying that the only way that the Cubans in South Florida can recover their power in the White House is voting for Bush. That is good enough reason for yeah. those that are in defense to vote against Bush. That's right. And also, there is a big rumor that Lázaro González, has been offered a job as a driver in the White House if Bush gets elected. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. And I hear Ch Cheney's riding shotgun. Uh, well, maybe his brother, uh, um, Delphine, would get a job for Cheney. Yeah, Delphine, he, bought, he just bought the house. Did you see that? Yeah, I think he's going to make a museum yeah, of all... Yeah, mission. I think he's going to open up a big scam there. 80,000 bucks he paid for the little shack. Okay. Ask the case. Have a good one, son. You too. Thanks. Oh. oh, my God. How do you like that? Can't you see that? Lazaro and uh, George W. and uh, Cheney all fighting over the wheel. 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless Line. Don't forget to listen to Motorsports Saturday with Joe Costello tomorrow morning, 6 to 7 a.m. I'll just keep reading it over and over again until 2 o'clock to make up for lost time. For your chance to win one of three pairs for race tickets to the Penzo 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway, November 12th, compliments of discount auto parts. That's parts. Oh, that Alfred E. picture, that's, that is the best. I'm not sure which one I like better. That one, they're right uh, under each other on your website. That one or the picture of him with that glass. See, I don't think that most of us drink ginger ale that way, yeah? No. Or like even uh, club soda. Here's a mobile in Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Pretty good, sir. Well, you know what? You keep talking about all these fanatics, the right-wingers, the Jesse Holmes. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, except... You exactly. leave out the most fanatical of all. And who's that? And that's Drew Lieberman. I mean, this guy is the biggest fanatic. I haven't left him out. I've been, been ripping him in the ass. I've been ripping him in the ass for weeks. I don't know why you say I leave him out. But he is the most fanatical of all. Yeah. Well, and he's not running for president. But he's a heartbeat away. Yeah. Is this the you're talking I got, about. I got news for you. I got news for you. He's a raving liberal compared to Dick Cheney. So if you want to compare vice presidents, uh, you got no no case. No case. Take a look at Dick Cheney's anti-human voting record, or just just pick up that book, Is, is Our Children Learning Yet?, by Paul Begala, and read about Dick Cheney's wonderful voting record in the House when he was uh, fascist number one. He makes Drew Lieberman seem like uh, Ted Kennedy, okay, at a party. In fact, that would be good. Let's, let's get Ted Kennedy in there, too. we got Lazaro Gonzalez, Ted Kennedy, George W., and uh, Dick Cheney. They're all in the car together. Tighten over the wheel. And I wonder if Mary Jo's body is still in the trunk. 
22 before 2 at 560 WQA. Only in the Banana Republic, baby. Only in Miami. Have you got your official Dennis Miller Monday Night Football Dictionary yet? Bill Cowher needs to make that change at quarterback, and Cordell will just have to acquiesce or be like Demeritus and Xerxes regarding the contrariety of one penchant in dealing with a lamentable divulgence. Put that in your sacrificial bonfire and smoke it. If you had a Dennis Miller Dictionary, you'd understand what he said. And you'd comprehend pre- and post-Renaissance references that could surface during the telecast. Jerome Davis looks more confused than Catherine Domenici trying to translate a Nostradamus quatrain. Should we play? Since receiving a Dennis Miller Dictionary, I've come to appreciate the intricacies of the game. Heck, it's changed my whole life. Honey, this evening repast is in a state of consumable readiness. What are you talking about? Supper's ready. And I'm not going to put up with any of your argumentum ad hominem tonight, cha, cha, cha. I-, I can't understand a thing you're saying. You are a rhapsodous treatment. I'm calling my condenser in the morning. I can no longer quarter in this percentages domicile. Yeah, baby. Who are you? It looks like she's up for free agency. And Bob here is going to be traded if he doesn't get himself a Dennis Miller dictionary. Don't let this happen to you. Call now and get your edition of the Dennis Miller Dictionary. They shuffle offensive players in and out so much, it looks like the third act of Hamlet, with Gildenstern and Rosencrantz both pleading for the brown oblong token. What am I again? He's an asshole. Exactly. Killer. 16 to 2 at 560 WQM. Here's a great fax. Dollar in Homestead. This is outstanding. It says, here's a question for your listeners. Why do Republicans accept that George W. lied to protect his family but continue to castigate Clinton for lying to protect his family from his indiscretion? Double standard? Republicans can lie to protect their families, but Democrats had better not. Nice going, Della. Excellent. Right on target, sweetheart. The old hypocritical oath. Here's North Miami Beach. Hello? Neil? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I'm not interested as way by... The guy who is so vitriolic against Gore, and I know to whom I refer. Yes. I mention his name, and I hear that you're going to be voting for Gore, as I am. Yes, sir. But do you feel, in your opinion, that it hurts the ticket by referring to Lieberman as you do? No, I do not. No, I do not. It does not. No, I do not, because at least I had the intellectual honesty not to sit here, sit here and be a show. I don't like the man. I don't like the way he presents himself. I don't like what he stands for. He's uh, He makes my stomach turn. So I'm not going to sit here and be a show. But if he's there along with Gore... Well, we, people don't vote for the vice president. Believe me when I tell you that. Nobody's voting for Dick Cheney. And although in this case, unfortunately, there, as you know, there are a lot of people who will vote because Lieberman's on the ticket. So I'm not going to hurt anybody. Well, you've answered my question, because we were discussing it last night in my apartment with some other people... And at first I thought I had misheard you, but then I heard it a couple of times. No, I call him Jew Lieberman because he wears his, his, his fanatical Judaism on his sleeve, and I resent that. But listen, vote early and often. I want to thank you very much. And someone, what, today was your birthday? Sunday, yeah. This coming Sunday? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Zagazan. Um, okay. Zagazan, over and out. Well, this thing is uh, going bananas here on, it, uh, on our pool, if that thing will ever stop. Over 500 votes. I don't really know how many of them are real or not. We never know anymore. 530. And it's possible because it is something that everybody in America, all over the world is talking about. Even on the North Pole they're talking about, the penguins and the Eskimos in uh, Alaska and the Akalowitz. Will George W. Bush's DUI arrest make any difference in the election outcome? 295 say. Yeah. 235 say. No. How do you like that? And like I said before, the fact that there are people out there who indicate that it's going to make a difference. Should cause should uh, you know give some people a little something to think about over the weekend, these next three days. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. Uh, just called you to wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, I I drive a truck. I listen to you all day long and drive around. And uh, I I agree with you every point, man. On Tuesday I'm going out with a little thirty thousand for this gore because uh, George Bush is really an idiot. Okay, nice call, pal. I'll see you there. And get all your buddies to do it too, and vote as well. Five six seven oh five sixty pop five six. Don't forget neilrogers.com. You can vote in our poll, and you can also take a look at some beautiful stuff. Oh man, it's uh, mind-boggling, shocking. Here's Cole Springs. Hello. 
Are they squeezing themselves on this line or what? Cool Springs. Okay, well, Fido had a good time. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon Wireless line. That's Coral Springs. What do you want? Here's Pompano Beach. Hello. Yeah, that was different, Uncle Neil. Yeah, uh, was. Real quick, I'd like to uh, read something out in the Miami Herald. Yes, sir. Yeah, Bill Clinton took his most active role in the presidential campaign the day visiting Kentucky and California Thursday and pronouncing Al Gore the next best thing to electing Clinton himself to a third term. term yeah, right. Also, one one other thing, when Baldy fi fires uh, Terry Murray, yeah. um, <clears throat> I was wondering if uh, Coach Knight might uh, take over and uh, go out on the, the uh, hockey. Okay, great. Uh... <laughs> oh, woo! I'm telling you, man. You may think that this was just some small little uh, incident, but this was no small incident. This was like a massive uh, brain fart that happened here in these last 24 hours. People are falling apart at the seams. This guy doesn't know his ice from his elbow. He's so uh, all bent out of shape from it. Now, I hear that they're bringing John S. Knight back. Not Bobby Knight. John S. Knight, he's going to be the uh, head honcho. He's going to whip him into shape. They're bringing his ass back. They figure even the dead man can't do worse than the Murray boys. So uh, BM and TM getting real nervous there, even calling the shows now. I noticed they didn't call this show, huh? No. No, that's because I know who the hell these guys are. I know Ivan Nova Seltzer from Alka Seltzer, okay? So they called in the Humper yesterday trying to make him look like a monkey, which he didn't. Believe me, he can handle his own. The Humper. They're not pulling any wool over his eye. They <laughs> <laughs> don't have that much wool in the world. That was funny. Trust me, I'm not going to fool him. 10-4-2 at 560 WQM on what's been a momentous day, and it just, uh, I can't even put it into words. Don't forget, Joe Costa, you got enough plugs. Oh, no, I mean, let's not overdo it, okay? I mean, how many people are up at 6 o'clock on a Saturday morning? 11. No, you have, you have some numbers in there, don't you? Did you get the hour by hour from the book? Not yet. On Saturday? Oh, uh, I don't want to see it. Why? Because. Got, we got the hour by hour for a midday over here. George ought to be pretty excited about this. Let's see, 9 o'clock, they got a 4 8. 10 o'clock, we had an 8 5. Followed by an 8 4, 7 7, and an 8 2. Hank starts off with a 6 1, a 5 8, a 5 7, a 6 point. And then at 6 o'clock, drops off to a 3 7. Almost half Hank's audience disappears at 6. Of course, 6 is not a good. Uh, see, and I remember the days when Hank, remember Hank used to do 3 to 7? When I came over here, he wasn't all that crazy about doing 2 to 6 instead. I hope by now he understands. First of all, he gets out of here sooner. That's number one. And number two, uh, the six to seven hours is a dead hour because this is not like a major market where they have a drive hour. Their drive time is done pretty much by six here, so six to seven is always a real <laughs> happy hour. So there you go, Humper. No matter what Brian Murray says. It's Friday, you bastard. Pop the 
I bought my ticket then and hold in my passport tight. Gotta respect the guy who uh, never worked a day in his life until he was at least 40 years old. Gotta respect a guy like that. Uh -huh. 156 at 560 WQAM, 5670, 560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless lines. Don't forget to check out neilwagers.com. Not just to vote on a poll this weekend, but take a look at some interesting stuff. Here's Boca. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Happy birthday. Thank you. I have a, uh, a one quick point that I didn't hear on the show at all today. I'd like to know for all the people, especially that guy earlier who was uh, saying this incident happened 25 years ago, mm -hmm. how long does it have to go, time have to pass before something doesn't matter? Like if you murder someone, if it's 30 years, is that okay? Or if it's 10 years ago when you're in a drunk driving accident and you hurt someone, is that okay? I think it's 27 years now. We, we just decided today if it's at least 27, then it counts. But if it's less than that, we don't count it. Right. So, so anything before 76 is okay. I mean, first of all, what kind of an answer would that be anyway? Somebody you want to run for president, not for dog catcher or president of Kiwanis, but president of the U.S was, and you, you make a, a statement that you're not going to respond to any questions about something that happened more than 15 years ago? I mean, that, that's, uh, what kind of journalists have we got out there? That should have raised all kinds of questions right off the bat. It's insanity. Not to mention Karen Hughes' face last night. She was making all sorts of these weird George... Oh, you, you should have seen it. This morning, she was much worse. I guarantee you, she's changing her diapers every five minutes now. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot. Have man. a great day. You too. Let me say it again. That, that reporter, highly respected reporter from the uh, Dallas Morning News... What's his name? I got it on the eye. It's not important what his name is. I wrote it down. I tossed it out. But anyway, and they have documentation on that because all they have to do is go back in the archives and uh, they can dig up the article and recount the interview that he had. It's not like he's just making it up. Here's Miami Lakes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. <laughs> huh. What a quick finger. Here's Delray Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. Um... I don't know how sure it is. Uh, first of all, 